Hey there, hi there, cozy folks. How's it going, Rich Chalk? Wet though it is. Do not put me on pizza. Eternal Dine, Zavern, The Real Evab, The Whittle Wolfie, Skeptic, Zizivification, Some Amir, <clears throat> Toaster King saying, been a while since I've been super active here. Wanted to say thank you to you and also to the people in this space and community. Today is my last day in a soul-sucking office after grinding to get somewhere for a long time. This stream I found at the beginning of that grind has been a driving force that keeps those good cozy vibes. Thank you for all you people do just by being cozy, sweet, and swagger. Thank you. Toaster King, for being part of the community for so long. And uh, I wish you all the best in the next step of your journey. Hey there, Dog Barker. Thanks for 39 months. Happy Wednesday. What do I do during the loading screen? Usually I'm grabbing a snack or typing up something last minute or checking emails or whatever computer tasks I can get done in 10 minutes. Do you have a moment of positivity to start out the day? I think that'd be perfect, actually. Twitch chat, what's going good in your life? What exciting or happy thing has happened to you or a friend or a loved one that uh, brought a smile to your face, whether it's big or small, you know, getting married, having a child, buying a house, or having a really tasty sandwich? These are all things you can share here in this moment. Nitrous Oxide started a new job. Storm of the Sea is getting a new 3DS tomorrow. Get that portable gaming on. Blender Render Man got accepted into college. You gonna make some 3D renders. Purpley Sky enjoying working on their roguelike game. I hope it goes well. MiniQ got into the master's program. Very, very good. Congratulations. Whittle Wolfie says, my friend and I are starting a company designing tabletop RPG games and producing a podcast. This is basically your dream. That's awesome. I, I wish you all the best in that endeavor. To it says, I, I did better with Silent on uh, heart runs than I thought I would. Gained a lot of respect for her. I think Silent is particularly good at heart, specifically. And uh, right up until about Ascension 20, she's, I think, one of the most consistent characters. I often rate Silent towards the bottom when it comes to A20 play, but if we're talking A15 or lower, I think Silent is very good as a character. Happy Moo, just excited to be waiting for a burger. Tasty burger. Valteriel loves their dog. Cute pupper. As a reminder, you are allowed to post pics in the pets, cuties, and sundry things section of the, whoop, not discords, discord. We've got a discord, and uh, pet p pet pics are more than welcome. People love the cutie pets. Rich Chalk says, I had three good Spire ones in one day. That's pretty sweet. We had four in one day yesterday. We had some really, really fun uh, Spire on our previous stream. Five Sands of Time on this Watcher. Silent had tough bandages and Tingsha. That's always fun. XJ Phil going to see their favorite wrestling company tonight. Hey, very good. D Money celebrated a 10 year anniversary with the wife last night at a nice restaurant. Beautiful. Baishtar just finished building a new PC and it booted on the first try. That's that's always a good feeling. When you press the power bu button and it springs to life instead of nothing followed by creeping dread. Toaster King enjoying some Hawaiian pizza. Tasty. Meanwhile, Lamb Gwyn enjoyed the, the Costco buck 50 Beef hot dog and soda combo at Costco. Legendary, but that's still only a buck fifty.
Donis Incarnate says, over the last six months, I've lost 35 pounds and upped my tolerance for general fitness. Well done. Keep at the keep at the journey. It's it is indeed a slow and steady thing. Personal fitness. Sin in putting the final sentences on their PhD thesis. Nice. Gumby's dad says, my boss just told me that things are looking good for getting a promotion. Nice. Gift four's son aced chemistry. Well done. I, I, as a as a chemist, I'm proud of them. Harry Hose. Just had a good yogurt cup. Recout's happy to be attending medic attending a musical at school. I read that as attending musical school first time. 75 Crispy thrilled with her current ironclad run. Baba Doon Guy also making a game, making good progress on developing a card game. Bailey's got a date tomorrow with a non-binary cutie. Well, I hope it goes well. Fingers crossed for you. Terrorish was on a roller coaster at midnight to begin the new year, new year, which is something I've certainly never done. Very cool. Roller coaster at midnight. That's that's awesome. Did you get to see fireworks on the roller coaster? Black Love of the Cat went skiing for the first time in a long time, and it went really well. A different kind of run. I've been skiing quite a few times, and I, I really enjoyed it. Very thrilling uh, activity. It's nothing quite like just hurling down a mountain at high speed with the, the wind biting into your face. Healthy Snacks, almost done with A20. Completed A19 with Defect, and now you're going to go for A20 for the first time. Good luck. A20 on Defect in particular is quite tough. Xylon the Consequential felt terrible for most of last year, but now feeling great. That's awesome. Nico Robin says, thanks to these ironclad streams, I was able to get to A20 on clad. Happy Toast Kauto, thanks for the six months of support, by the way. Rhythm Prism says, I almost one-shot Donu on the board game Spire with a double attack skewer. Did 48 damage out of 50 on turn one. That's awesome. Robin isn't stop and says, I'm a longtime YouTube watcher. Recently, I uploaded my Spired modded character. Spire balance is very tricky. It sure is. Very, very difficult game to balance. In fact, all games, I think, are, are very diff difficult to balance properly. Or finely. Uh, most games don't get anywhere near the level that Spire achieves. It was only with um, some really thorough designing, uh, as well as... Um, a lot of looking at player data that the devs of Spire were able to get it to where it is now. Healthy Snack says, Last night when I went to give my sleeping daughter a kiss on the head, she woke up and gave me a big hug before going back to sleep. It's those little things that you cherish as a parent. Sounds like a very adorable, very wholesome moment. I'm into fitness. Fitness pizza in my mouth. Love it. Love it. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Scavito. Actually, speaking of uh, a moment of positivity, here's a, one of my favorite chemistry jokes for you. Two atoms are sitting next to each other in a bar. One says to the other, Oh my god, I, I think I've lost an electron. Are you sure? Says the other one. I'm positive, replies the first. Mr. Fishhead says, I quit vaping for the new year successfully and I'm proud of myself. Well done on building better habits for yourself. Rossi Dog, finish your first exam today. Well done. Good afternoon, Rakana. A skiing roguelite game. 
terrifying. Paradox just happy to be watching their favorite streamer right now. Green Candle says they're training for a half marathon and ran a comfy, comfy 20 kilometers. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say ran 20 kilometers and comfy in the same sentence before, but there you go. Would I rebalance Tiny House in some spire, in spire if I could? Yes. I think I've said this a couple times, but my personal change to Tiny House would be um, also give a random common relic to the player. I think that's all it would need to be consistently pretty good. Abby SH, thanks for the prime sub in the seven months. Heard that one before and it never gets any better. And the second Adam also got his drink with no charge. That's right. Healthy Snacks, thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. And Biggleby says, I went to the Ivo this last weekend and it was super fun. Stands for the La... Oh, LVO. Las Vegas Open. Biggest Warhammer tournament and con of the year. Very cool. Sounds like a proper nerd fest. Always thought Tiny House should be the skip option in case the other three relics stink. That's kind of neat. So you can always always fall back on Tiny House if you don't uh, if you don't want the three flavors of energy that are being offered. All right, so we're properly caught up with chat here. I think it's well past time that we played a little bit of clad here. Actually, 45 minutes past the hour now between our delayed start and our uh, moment of positivity, so I say it's it's game time. Currently at seven in a row with the clad. Will that streak continue is the question. Hello again. Rarely do I mind a common relic start. Let's see what the act layout looks like first here. Choosing your starting bonus is always going to be hand in hand with choosing a path in Act 1, I find. Ooh, and I, I see we have a bit of an issue, actually. That is not the sort of thing you want to see going into Act 1, or act any act, really. It's an early mandatory elite here. No matter which path we go, we have to get through one of these elites. And I think that means that you want to rule out any starting option that could have a low roll. So Transform 2 is a bad idea. Boss Swap is a bad idea. The left path is not so terrible. However, looked at as a whole, it kind of is. Because you're either getting... One elite and three rest sites, or you're getting two elites and two rest sites as your whole act. Whereas if you're willing to go through one of the red elites, uh, one of the other three elites here, you can get either the burning elite and a whole bunch more rest sites, or just more elites in general. What is the low roll on Transform 2? Um, basically any card without a, a useful immediate impact. Um, that doesn't do damage or produce blocks, so Double Havoc would be pretty bad. Um, you could get something like Double Corruption, Berserk, Demon Form, Barricade. And then even some of the ones you wouldn't think of as being bad early could be bad, especially if... if combined with another not-so-immediately-useful card, like Seeing Red, or Bloodletting, or Dual Wield. Yeah, there's a lot to choose from. Rupture. Basically, anything that provides less immediate use than a Striker or Defend, and there's lots of lots of cards that do that, um, could put you in trouble very quickly. Is Double Warcry just a better Empty Cage? 
So I think this is a situation where choose a card is actually pretty decent. We could take a common relic, and, and most common relics provide some advantage, although we're not guaranteed to actually get any advantage out of that common relic. Choose a card would more consistently give us an advantage, where we have a leg up on building for this early elite, which we're definitely going to need help for uh, if we want to get past one of these. But I am, generally speaking, a relic enjoyer. So I think I would choose common relic here. Although there are, yeah, a few a few common relics that won't help us, like um, ceramic fish or smiling mask or juzu bracelet or tiny chest or omomori. That's actually quite a few. But it could be a red skull, you know. Dang it, that's one of the useless ones. We get a dream catcher, although maybe not useless, right? If we if we have to rest, we'll at least get a card reward. But I'd rather have had that card reward already. So I think what we should do is go to the shop. Uh, after we get to the shop, we can evaluate how prepared we are for an elite. We can evaluate what potions we got. And we can see what we need to get through that first elite fight. Yeah, Dreamcatcher with Guardian's not that bad. We can also get to quite a few rest sites, right? We can do something like this. We want to. I think we're going to keep our pathing options mostly open, though. And yes, we are a little bit further into the relic pool as well. So, basically, how it works is that our our first common relic of the run was going to be Dreamcatcher, no matter what. So now we have the Dreamcatcher. We're allowed to find other common relics. If I double defend here, we're wasting one energy. Uh, this is block five, right? So if I bash defend, we get a guaranteed kill next turn. I think that's probably what I want to do versus double defend. And then we can't kill it next turn. It could attack for 17. Is it worth resting just to get a card reward if we don't need a heal? Generally not. Not versus upgrading. Would I have a, rather have a bag of prep or a preserved insect here? I think in, in this specific situation where I can take on three elites plus an early burning elite, I would probably pref prefer the preserved insect. Oh, wow. Blood for blood, pummel anger. What a set of early options here. Blood for blood is definitely the kill elites card. That's for sure. Anger is pretty good too. I think pummel is actually the worst option of these three. Blood for blood typically wants an upgrade, which can make it a little hard to satisfy, but I really like it overall. I also prefer not taking anger going into guardian. Is this what we would have seen with the choose a card? I'm not sure. I, I think so. But I'm not 100% sure if this would have been our starting card reward. You could easily verify that by looking at the seed here. I'm going to take the blood for blood. Although it is outright unplayable initially, that could present a problem. It also might not. Ironclad's good at taking little tip bits of damage here or there. We don't need to take one more damage. Either we draw the blood for blood and we kill, or we draw three strikes and we kill. We don't need to take this one. We're actually at plus five from the cultist fight here. Cool. Shrug or heavy blade? I'm down for a shrug. I like having a different valued block card so that I can set up chip damage for blood for blood. And I like having shrug going into the guardian fight. And I'm not that worried about Legavulin because of blood for blood. Although Gremlin Knob is probably our biggest threat at the moment. Scragganaw, thanks for the 30 months of support. Alright, I'll take a shrug. 
Heavy Blades, I mean, we do want damage more than we want block right now, but this is not very good damage. So let's take the uh, Shrug. Kazroll, 3,000. Thanks for the Prime sub. Why can the Watcher always win an H20 run? Because she watches all the pro straights on YouTube. Oof. It's a bit of a stretch there. Pro strats, pro prostrate. No refunds. Bit of a lousy turn one. Yeah, we're taking damage here. No control over that. Just defend, strike, strike. Grip check in. Oh, yeah. That's definitely not running. Actually, wait. Something's wrong. Mm, let me restart it. I think something's iffy here. It was running. Okay. Oh, is the website down again as well? Uh-oh. We are trying to win streak heart runs here, so we have to beat the heart to get a win. Okay, we got no potions, which makes me pretty glad uh, that we're up to the shop here. I think our bot has perished. So script is now running, but... Something on the back end's down. Appreciate you, Faley. So, I'm liking Headbutt a lot. Uh, Demon Form is here early, which is... Interesting. Plain interesting way to scale. Big and expensive. I don't like this card early very much. Uh, meanwhile, Headbutt allowing us to put Blood for Blood back on top seems very good. So let's grab that Headbutt. It's also pretty decent damage in and of itself. And Headbutt bash in a pinch too. And we get to the shop where we see... Well, what do we see exactly? Bust is a thing. Actually, wait, Combust with Blood for Blood is definitely a thing. This causes us one damage to ourselves each turn and deals damage to all enemies. That sounds actually exceedingly useful here. Be nice if we could afford one or more of these relics, but that's definitely not the case. Ancient Pot can help against Gremlin Knob. I think a Fear Potion will help against several different elites. And with no potions currently, I'm super going to buy the Fear Potion. Um, with the Blood for Blood, I'm also super going to buy the Combust. That leaves us with 46 gold, which is enough for nothing else. Is Combust dual wield ever a thing? I wouldn't say so. Um, even with multiple Combusts in play, they deal the damage to you all at the same time. So it still only counts as one Combust in terms of making Blood for Blood cheaper. That said, I think we got strong enough that we can go for the Burning Elite here. I do advocate taking out the Burning Elite in Act 1 where possible. I also don't want to go to another shop this act, so I'd prefer to avoid that in pathing. So I really like this path here. Yeah, maybe if you had Tungsten Rod. That's right. We also get an early transform. I think against Guardian, I'd like to transform a Strike here into a random Ironclad card. Um, hopefully an Offering. Offering would be perfect. Sentinel. Interesting. Well, we have another Block card. And we are fighting sentries, actually, so maybe that's going to work out for us. Maybe that's going to work out for us. This fight, we mostly just want to get the combust in play to start dealing damage to all of them. Um, the 
Blood for Blood will help a fair bit as well. So the next turn we play Combust. I'm taking damage twice here, so Blood for Blood will be two cost. I don't think I'm going to play it, though. Um, we need to headbutt a card, then. So we'll go defend. Headbutt a Dazed. Get rid of one of them. And then I didn't draw the Shrug. That's actually fine. We'll go Combust. Defend Strike. I think. Good Blood for Blood to get the kill here. A 5 health. That actually might be worth it. Let's do that. Hopefully we can avoid too much further harm here. Oh yeah. Let's kill this fool. Give me headbutt. Yes. 25. So if we put blood for blood on top, we just kill next turn, which is what we want to do. And then we're out of this fight. Combust would kill, but we actually save the one hit point if we finish with a strike, so we want to make sure we do that. And we do get Red Skull, so our bonus actually was Red Skull the whole time. That's amazing. Sabin with the Prime sub and two full years. Did you know that you can subscribe to your favorite streamer for free with Twitch Prime? Twitch Prime every time. Is two copies of Immolate in Act 1 too much? I don't think so. Soup to go. I think that might be the perfect number. Gonna let Combust kill for Red Skull. Barricade anyone? Whirlwind seems okay. Whirlwind seems okay. Especially with uh, Red Skull, right? Yeah, Red Skull, Whirlwind, sure. Just the Combust is not enough area damage. But having the Whirlwind will give us really good coverage for Act 2. Uh, as well as solving some of the hard pool fights in Act 1, like four Gremlins or five Slimes, which could be nice. We're also going to snag an upgrade on the Blood for Blood. Blood for Blood gets cheaper and does more damage, which makes it one of the best upgrades in Slay the Spire. I think it's a very high priority upgrade anytime you get it early as the Clad. And yeah, I'm just going to use the Fear Potion and do 33 damage. Gremlin Knob here. This Gremlin Knob is extra strong. But we're going to be extra strong next turn, right? I think that means we can kill. So this would be 12 by 3, which kills. Yeah, so we kill Gremlin Knob and we're out of here. We go to almost the perfect amount here. In the next fight, we'll have Red Skull active at the beginning. We also get a very well-timed Matryoshka. Our next two non-boss chests each contain two relics, including, well, the one we're about to enter. This is my favorite time to get this relic, right before the first chest of Act 1. And I can take a Flame Barrier, which is a really cool block card. I want that, too. Ari Salino, thanks for the Prime sub and the four months of support. Sun and Diab with a Prime sub and the 12 months. Let's take Flame Barrier. I've got everything? Yeah. What's in the box? It's... Bag of Marbles, Red Skull Whirlwind. Heck yeah. It's also Blue Candle, which can let us play unplayable curse cards to the tune of one damage to ourself. That could be neat for setting up Red Skull. There's a few interesting interactions Ironclad could have with this relic, but um, up against the Blue Key, I would usually advise the Blue Key because there's no assurance the Blue Candle will do anything. Wait, we have Blood for Blood. Hold on. No, you're right. Blood for Blood, Twitch chat. It is good for Blood for Blood. That does make it worth taking. Okay, I'll take the Blue Candle. You're right. 
We'll have more relics we can skip later. You're right. And I think I'm going to upgrade our Whirlwind, especially with the Bag of Marbles. This becomes a really good turn one card. It's not enough to KO. This full block is fine. Yeah. Although, our next fight's an elite, right? Probably want to leave at 37 again. So if we can take 6 or close to 6, that would be ideal. There's one. Two. Three. Four, five, six. Cool. Uppercut's good. I am an uppercut enjoyer. Weak and vuln, both things the Ironclad wants in spades. Madler with the Prime Sub and the Six Mons. Thank you, thank you. Do I want an Ancient Potion versus Thorin's Block Pot? Much love, Faley. Thanks for what you do. Revive our bot. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave this on the ground. Is this a Rupture deck? It could be. This is a, definitely a deck that could take a Rupture at this point. I would also say Bloodletting is good. I might even say Runic Cube. No, I wouldn't. Not Runic Cube. Ooh. You come across a dead adventurer on the floor. His pants have been stolen. In this event, we are essentially faced with an additional elite here. So we get two more elites, not one more. If we s search here, we can find some loot, but there might also be just an elite fight. Um, if you win the elite fight, you can then get all the, the loot, with the loot being uh, a relic as a normal elite has, money more than a usual elite has, um, and sometimes a potion. We are caught off guard. We get the fight right away, which I am perfectly happy with because I want that huge money reward. I need to punch you now. Having Whirlwind is going to be really good in this fight. Which elite is which wording in this event? Scoured by Flames tells you it's going to be the three sentries. Uh, eviscerated and chopped by Giant Claws is Legavulin. Uh, gouged and trampled by a Horned Beast for Grumlinob. Mm, flame Barrier Headbutt, I guess. I don't really have a great hand here. Oh well. Um, let's headbutt Flame Barrier. We'll go a little bit lower the on health than we wanted to. That's fine. One more damage here is also fine. And then we kill next turn. Spin to win. Get 65 gold. So, normally an elite drops 30 to 35 gold. Or no, 25 to 35 gold, I believe. Um, this one gets plus 30 and we max rolled. So we get 65 gold, the maximum possible amount. A lantern for more energy on turn one, which is really good with a bag of marbles and the whirlwind. And we could take another card here. Hemokinesis kind of works with what we're already doing. But I also feel like we've added plenty of cards here. So, no. Now we just need Akabako Bottled Flame. Oh, I'm so playing Bash Uppercut here. Get freaking destroyed. It was me who was destroyed. 
It'd be a good time to consider the block potion. Just saying. Let's do it. I'll take damage twice. That'll be a one cost blood for blood. I want it to be free. I can play the Ascender's Bane here. Let's do that. Next blue candle. Yeah, you save me one energy here. And then we can do Flame Barrier Shrug It Off. That was worth it. Actually, we can do Lethal. That's even better. Beautiful. We get Toy Ornithopter healing us five when we use a potion, which is kind of interesting with Red Skull, but overall good to have. We could take an Anger. I don't think we need one at the moment. Purple Crane with the Prime sub and the 21 months of sub ports. Yeah, we have a lot of relics for Act 1. I agree. Did you know we're going to go to exactly 36 health for Guardian? That's perfect. By the way, this does 16 times 4 damage to all enemies. Absurd. Oh my, speaking of absurd. I actually have no exhaust, which makes this a very bad Dark Embrace. However, Inflame looks pretty good, giving us strength. Particularly with the Whirlwind. It's a good Inflame. Does Baylor like Dark Embrace? Yeah, a little bit. Wait, Dark Embrace Blue Candle. There you go. That's all we need. If I had one True Grit, uh, that would be enough for me to take Dark Embrace here. But it looks like we are doing the punch thing, so let's grab an Inflame. Can the Red Skull bonus vanish mid-fight if you heal above half health? Yes. Bonus... If that happens, the game counts removing strength from you to be a debuff. So if you have artifact, it'll be consumed and you'll keep the three strength. You can then go back below half health and gain an additional three strength. I might upgrade to Uppercut though over in Flame here. I think I'm going to. Chummy or Lion, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the cozy. All right, thanks for keeping it cozy for the year plus. Excuse me. Let's transform you now? Quite the opening from us. There are some draws that wouldn't be able to transform. Let's just do it. This one's fine. I am going to play Combust in this fight. Is that true? Blood for Blood's going to be nice and cheap no matter what. Don't worry. Maybe I go Uppercut Defend here. Let's not play Combust yet. I'm a little concerned, actually. Liquid Bronze in this fight. I think that would help a fair bit. Use this. Get five more health as well. Yeah, this is gonna hurt. Can't do enough damage to transform Guardian here, so let's just inflame, defend, whirlwind, take a bunch. We're not that good at this fight, honestly. A little concerning. Well, bet that blood for blood does a ton of damage. Let's go flame barrier, headbutt flame barrier. Be 
deal a ton of damage back. Flame Barrier again. Ooh, free blood for blood. Deal a ton of damage back. And then hopefully we can just kill. Or we can survive. Surviving is fine too. Killing is fine. Hey, not bad. It was uh, kind of a damage race against Guardian, but one we were able to win pretty decisively. Dark Embrace, come back. I mean, that's still a really good corruption because we have Sentinel, Shrug, and Flame Barrier. So I'm leaning towards taking corruption here. Bot is back up. Thank you, Faley, for the amazing work and the very swift work. That was fast as heck. Kosa, th thank you so much for three months of support. Here's to many more indeed. Yeah, I'm taking this corruption. Fiendfire can slap pretty hard as well here. But I really like that Corruption lets us take advantage of the energy from Sentinel, particularly with Whirlwinds. Um, this could allow us to take a Sneko Eye and feel really happy about it, or a Runic Pyramid and feel really happy about it. Stan Tomato Man, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Had we gotten the orange palettes, Berserk would be cool. Here's our boss relic options, some very curious ones. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Sparkle Crotch Thotty. Did you hear about the ironclad relic that draws you a card every time you trim a hedge. It's the runic cube. No refunds. Before we pick a uh, boss relic here, by the way, I am going to take a quick break. Um, quick bio break here so I can think a little bit better. We do have some pretty tempting options here. Transform all strike and defend cards can be quite strong, particularly with Corruption, whatever skills we get. Um, could be powerful, or if we get powers, they might synergize. We could take Card Draw on Health Loss. Note this doesn't work the way you want it to with Combust, so don't even think about it. Uh, or Double Strength Potions is kind of interesting. In any event, Twitch chat, I will be right back in just a minute or two to pick this boss relic. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. No spoons left, only knives. Thanks for the eight months, by the way. What's up, Wumbo, with three months, another month down. Paradox, giving out a gifted sub to B Brawn. Welcome back, B Brawn. So I would say that this is a pretty bad runic cube. Relatively bad sacred bark. We do have two very good potions with sacred bark currently, such that um, we could absolutely slap in act two. This is a 40 damage potion that can kill a slaver instantly. Flex pot for 10 strength plus whirlwind would kill all of the enemies immediately. That's actually not a bad sacred bark. Otherwise, we're risking it on the transform with Pandora's. Pandora's could give us some really good stuff, or it could give us complete garbage. It's a little bit unclear. Um, that said, I don't mind losing the defense that much with... Even with the corruption here. I'd say this is a, a relatively good Pandora's. It might low roll, but it's on average pretty good. And this is, on average, consistently solid. This is not a bad Sacred Bark. Probably Pandora's Box would be my first pick, Sacred Bark my second, and then Runic Cube a distant third. But this this is a genuinely good Sacred Bark. Um, yeah, it will feel bad if the Pandora's Box low rolls. That's why I'm eyeing Sacred Bark a little bit more here, because it it's going to be consistently a strong positive. And I can't say the same thing for the... Pandora's box. But I, I do know how consistently good this is, so I'm going to click on it. And that's... Uh, not not as bad as it might look like double clash. <laughs> not as bad as it might look, actually. Uh, the Searing Blow is definitely the worst of the cards here. Dual Wield has some roll. Having a second Whirlwind is not bad. But yeah, this is definitely a hot mess of cards. and Very notably, zero rares here which is going to make things pretty interesting. My usual opinion of Pandora's box is that you need to get yourself to a shop and slash or a rest site shortly after having it visited upon you so that you can remove your worst transformed card because there's always going to be one stinker in the bunch. We do have another early forced elite here, here, or here. With the potions we have, though, I'm not that afraid of that Force Delete. Um, do I have two cards I'd want to remove? You betcha. But maybe two shops? I like the idea of going to some events here. Elithian, thanks for the 16 months of support. Go to either of those, and then through here. We'd fight two elites relatively early, but I think we could probably do this. Our act boss is the Bronze Automaton, uh, who will require a scaling solution. We don't really have a way to scale for that fight right now, but we have a lot to do short term. And then getting to another shop for another remove is tempting. I wonder if that's not in the fights. I feel like we lose hit points in fights, though. Hmm. All we have to do is keep dual-wielding Clash. You're right. No matter what, we have to get to that early shop. This, uh, there's also this early shop. To do fire before the elite, but then kind of falls apart in the second half. Oh. The script is still throwing an error. Let me reboot the script one more time. Okay, it might be working now. Crypto Bra, thanks for the 100 bits. Glad to hear you love the streams. I'm going to go over here. Hmm. Instant flex pot is very tempting. Forces Zaishin, thanks for that gifted sub. 
Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, Mr. Cake God. So regular whirlwind does 12 by 4. Wait, that's 48. So actually only one of them lives. Yeah, this is 48 to all. Could just take 11 heal 6. I'm gonna use the fire pot. Because, yeah, we get another potion. This way we take 0 heal 11. Replace potion. Seems good. Lunchbox with the prime sub and the two months of support. Can't believe we have to upgrade Searing Blow at every rest site from now on. It's true. Yeah, I want two events. I want two events. Good. Can't believe we have to upgrade Searing Blow at every rest site. Don't we want to get to Red Skull range? Not, not immediately. Not when we could be at full health. Red Skull range is nice, but it's always having hit points. Catracon, thanks for uh, the half year of subage in advance. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Transform back into Searing Blow. That's the way to do it. I don't think we need two Combusts, do we? Or we could lose one of the Clashes here, but I think actually the Clashes are not that bad. Not as bad as two Combusts are, anyway. Let's lose one of these Combusts. Turn it into an Evolve. I actually don't mind that. Um, this deck wants a power through now, although the com Clashes would hate it. You heard me. The Clashes are not that bad. Rupture is here. I'm not sure we want Rupture, though. Whenever you lose health from a card, gain strength. What about Ori to let us look at a whole bunch of cards right now? And we can still buy a removal, too. Another Sentinel with the Corruption is actually not the worst thing, either. But I think the Ori is looking really good. What's in the Ori? Jordan Osterberg, thanks for the four months of the support. Trugit or Pommel Strike are okay. There's a Rupture here for free or a Spot Weakness. Bloodletting could be good. Armaments is okay. Eh, these are all pretty weak, actually. No rares and no upgraded cards out of 15. It's pretty sad, actually. Uh, I will take a spot weakness, though. And I think I'll take bloodletting. Yeah, I'll put. I have double whirlwind. I'll take bloodletting, too. I don't want the rupture. Do I? Rupture over spot weakness? Hmm. The pummel strike. I like spot weakness more with corruption. But yeah, rupture is probably more strength. It's also another power played. Bad for specifically awakened one. Not that big a deal. I want the spot weakness. Okay, that was kind of bad overall. Uh, and we can at least buy a remove, so we can remove one of these clashes. Or metallicize. Hey there, Argus Blarg. Actually, great question. So, Spire animations run at a certain speed normally, um, but uh, you can speed them up, of course, with fast mode. But uh, even fast mode aside, you can get faster animations on your Spire by setting max frame rate to 240 and disabling V-Sync, so that the, the animations will will not try to sync to your monitor refresh speed. And uh, that will cause the, the super fast animations that you see. Really noticeable with cards like Whirlwind or with Defect Lightning Orbs uh, for maximum speed. Be aware that if you if you play at that supercharged animation speed, um, you will often end up glitching out the game sounds. As sounds will fail to unload from memory before you start adding new ones. 
um, causing a memory leak and eventually breaking the game sound. Oops. One sec. Let me lock that so I don't break it. There we go. But yeah, that's that's what you're missing for the, the full animation speed stuff. Uh, I guess I want an event here, because I'm ready to fight this elite. Too bad. We don't get a choice. I'm going to play Corruption. And all my blocks are going to the discard pile. Lovely. Hmm. Make a clash or block? I think I'm going to make a clash. And they said Clash was no good. Behold. Lots of health saved by using the Distilled Chaos here. That's definitely going to happen. Bit of full health. Burning Pact plus or a Limit Break. Wow. I have to admit, I think the Burning Pact is very good. Especially with the free upgrade. Um, although the Limit Break has some interesting utility. But with the whole doubling our strength thing. I'm going to grab that Burning Pack. Card draw is very valuable on Clad. Yeah, there's our rare card from the Ori. Jedit O'Janon, thanks for the 47 months. Feel like garbage, but can still re-up. Glad you're here. Get well soon. And Keezy. He's NYC. Thank you so much for the 15 months of support. Hey, we got Whirlwind on turn one. Excellent work. So we just give him the old Lexeroni, right? Just flex. Crypto with a raid of six folks. Welcome, welcome. The old Razzle Dazzle. Do we need it, though? That is the question I'm currently wondering. We could take 21 here. We'd be overhealing by 11 if I use the flex pot, right? So we get six from burning blood, five from using the potion. I don't actually think we want to. Um, because this gets a kill on its own, this is fine. No one can resist the double whirlwind. Get a bottled tornado, and there's the power through. So now we're starting to get something really good going. We have power through plus, we have evolve, we have second wind. That's pretty sweet. It's green. And we could even bottle the evolve if we want to. That's kind of interesting. As a bottle. I'm not sure we want bottled corruption or bottled combust or bottled in flame. But Bottled Evolve means that uh, late game threats, notably Shield and Spear and the Heart, are a lot less threatening with their draw. So this is less of an immediate benefit and more of an Act 4 benefit, having this Evolve Bottled. Let's do that. And since we're in such good shape, we can definitely take another Elite here, no problem. Not sure we're going for this shop anymore. Uh, what's our upgrade? We don't need to upgrade Evolve yet. We could upgrade Bloodletting or the card draw in Pommel Strike, or we can make the Corruption cheaper. Cheaper Corruption is particularly nice, especially if I draw it off Pommel Strike or something. But at the same time, we might not be playing Corruption in every fight. 
which makes me want to evolve, upgrade maybe the Bloodletting or the Pommel Strike. Ooh, and we can dual wield that Pommel Strike. Let's upgrade this Pommel Strike. Because then we can do like a, a Pommel Strike Bloodletting cycle as a win con against a boss. That could be a big deal. Corrupt in time. Well, the corruption upgrade would have helped here, because then I could play Evolve and Clash. I'm not going to use my Cultist Potion here. I think it'll do better in the boss fight. Does that mean we can pick Mark of Pain now? Yes, we could definitely take Mark of Pain for essentially zero downside. It's kind of cool. I uh, maybe wanted to play in flame. Let's do metallicize. Hmm. That's a pretty bad dual wield. Really bad hand overall, actually. Just terrible. Awful, I say. Oh, and I didn't play the Evolve. Ooh, that was my fault. Shoot. Thankfully, I think with this Bloodletting, we can kill now. Uh, 16 times 5 which is 80, I believe, and then we do 5 from Combust, so we get a perfect kill. My math is correct. Let me just double-check that. Yep, that's exact lethal. That's pretty cool. And then we're at uh, Red Skull value for the next fight. We get a Singing Bowl. We can now skip cards to gain two max health. Would have been nice to get that before Ori, but that's okay. More max health is certainly welcome. Under most circumstances. We get two more relics in this chest. They are Art of War. Gain bonus energy after not playing attacks. And if we want it, Kunai. Three attacks in one turn for one dexterity. Kunai is... Not that good on clad, usually. I like it more with the whirlwinds here. It will definitely save some health sometimes. So, sure. I'll take this kunai. Strikes for bites, except I have no strikes. Bites could allow us to heal up, but uh, I think Red Skull says we'd rather have more max health. Here's a great fight for Bottled Evolve. Although spot weakness is showing up at the wrong time. And Art of War is doing work as well here. Definitely want to go for the Cultist first. Something like Uppercut Whirlwind here. Next turn we're looking at some problems. The cultist will be doing a big attack. Or the Chosen will be doing a big attack. The Cultist will be contributing as well. Don't like it. Wow, that's bad. Catastrophe arrives. Hmm. Yikes. Headbutt kills here. I have no way to draw a card, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to eat pretty much all 31 of this damage. Bummer. Freaking cultist. A big bummer. Just Pandora's box things, I suppose. Yeah, Chosen, why are you like this? 
Indeed. Why are you like this? Oh yeah, what if we did bloodletting blood for blood? Maybe there was a way to get a little bit more damage there. So we could do more. Go for an immediate kill here. Interesting thought. Interesting thought. See, so you're still causing me problems, too. Hmm. Corruption Flame Barrier only takes three. And then we're mostly set. Is there a Flex Potion Escape here? This would be... 18, 27 by 3 is enough, right? Yeah, that'd be 81. So that would kill if we Whirlwind. With Flex Pot. Let's do that. So we might have gotten another potion there. The Blade with a plus, huh? That's a little tempting. We do want cards that kill stuff. I don't really want to have more attacks in this deck. I think I'd rather just take two more health. Hmm. I'm wondering if we should head to a shop just so we can buy another potion here. Our health is low enough that I'm willing to do anything it takes to just survive the next couple floors. Um, also, bonus, if there's a Dark Embrace in the shop, we can afford it. Let's do that. There's another Evolve here. There's a block potion. Block potion's very good in terms of keeping us alive short term here. Well, let's buy that. Be on our way. Yeah, because this next fight is not ideal, as you can see. Please, why? Why do you do this to me? Whirlwind is close to being enough damage on its own, actually. It's not, though. If only if we had Flex Potion, we could kill these on turn one. See what Shrug draws. Pommel Strike, huh? Alright, I'll play your game. Second win blocks for more than Flame Barrier would. Gets rid of Evolve and Dual Wield and Flame Barrier. Seems good. Saves an energy, too. Maybe should have headbutt over Whirlwinding? Maybe. Not gonna block pot for only four health there. This time we can just uppercut power through. Can't make blood for blood cheap enough. And hopefully we're doing better next turn. This looks pretty good. So, if we spot weakness, whirlwind. Let's see, this would go to 11 base, 16 by 3 would not kill. Hmm. Doesn't look like there's a way to kill then. Apparently, we can do 12 by 4, which also does not kill. I could play corruption, spot weakness, metallicize. Taking six? Mm -mm. Deck is definitely struggling at this moment, but we're, we're surprisingly not that far away from something that really, really works. Might be tempted to block pot here, but I, the way I see it, if it's not blocking a full 12, I don't want to use it. Might just use the Cultist Potion for five health here. Play the Whirlwind.
Yeah, we could kill the rat and then it would make more of a difference, but. Caw. Here we go. We do get a potion back. Two more health. Okay. Health is going in the correct direction. We have these two as our final opposition. This doesn't look that bad. Sure, we're getting attacked for a lot on turn one, but we also have block on turn one. I can even play Evolve if I want, and I think I do in this fight. Was Iron Wave ever, ever a consideration there with the Kunai? I don't think it would have been good enough. I don't think so. Deal 44 to both of them. Mystic is buffing, not healing. By bloodletting, then the Mystic would die outright, which I actually don't want. I want to kill the Centurion next turn. Hopefully we can do 34 damage. Yes. Thanks to the power of Clash. Okay, that fight went quite well. We're up to basically half health. I think another flame barrier is pretty good with the corruption. Although against Bronze Automaton, I might be trying to win in a non-corruption manner. How are we beating Bronze Automaton here? I'm pretty sure I'm dual wielding Pummel Strike and we're doing something crazy. So I think that means we're going to need to rest going into Bronze Automaton, which will give us another card award off the Dreamcatcher. And I think that means I want fewer cards. Oh, we can also do the Evolve Power Through Second Wind thing. So yeah, although upgrading Evolve might be worth it for that reason. I, I still think we want more health. Well, let's take two max health and rest. That seems helpful. That certainly seems helpful. Good job, Dreamcatcher. Finally, our starting bonus pays off. It's not the best rare card I've ever gotten from Dreamcatcher, but it's certainly clutch. Welcome, offering. Welcome. Okay, so in this fight, we want to exhaust the deck down. Basically means play all of the powers and exhaust all of the cards wherever possible. Uh, I'm just getting down to Pommel Strike, Burning Pact, Power Through, Second Wind, and not a whole lot else. We want to be able to use our skills over and over again, so that means not playing Corruption here, probably. In fact, I think I'm going to use the Burning Pact on the Corruption here. I don't want a Corruption here. Uh, what I do want is the Dual Wield, though. This might be a Flame Barrier turn. Headbutting, Burning Pact is also very tempting. Which one is Stealing Offering? If I headbutt Burning Pact, I can't block this turn. Concerning. This could be our block pot turn. I could do in flame headbutt. I think I'm just gonna flame barrier. Let's see how this goes for a minute.
to my spot weakness, will you? How dare you. It's a worrying draw. I don't know. Yes, good, okay. This is five times eight, 40 damage. So that means they're almost dead. Can get a kunai proc here. I just want to almost kill them. Red Skull, activate. Let's get rid of this. Okay, now we're talking. Now we can get rid of certain cards that we don't want. Guess I can lose this uh, spot weakness and slash or in flame here, huh? We can also lose the flame barrier at this point. But I don't want to lose bloodletting. So we do shrug. Shrug first. By the power of Red Skull. Okay, then bloodletting, then second win, delete three more skills. Yes, then we can dual wield the pommel strike next turn. Here we go, here we go. We'll go for act four with these streaks. Yes, we have to beat the heart for this to count as a win. And yes, that is kind of insane. Headbutt the power through here, because uh, Hyperbeam is next turn, and I don't think I can kill. Yeah, next turn doesn't look so hot. I agree. <laughs> next turn looks kind of bad, so I think what I'm going to do is this. Blood for blood, power through, headbutt power through. So I have at least have power through plus to block Hyperbeam. Keep me alive here. You can use a potion, too. Oh, good. We got the second wind. All right, so I don't even think we need the potion, then. This will block for another lots. Twenty four more. Could have played Kunai there. Doesn't matter though, we win. So I'm pretty sure. Should have duped the blood for blood. Either way, GG. Whew. Tough fight. Can see, though, that we prevailed by not playing the Corruption, by resting, and by just trading blows a little carefully there. That was uh, wonderfully done. Now we get to choose Limit Break, Double Tap, Exhume, or Skip. Exhume with Corruption is one of my favorites. Get back any exhausted card, whether it be Sentinel or Flame Barrier or Offering. Exhume is great here. Or Limit Break and double our strength, doubling the Inflame, doubling the Spot Weakness. We saw in the last fight, though, that we might actually choose to abandon Strength Scaling and go for Card Draw Scaling. So I think I'd rather take Exhume here. We might not be using strength a whole lot anymore. Somebody was talking about Sneko Eye. That is a juicy Sneko Eye. Sneko Eye says, draw more cards each turn, but start combat confused. Our cards are all random cost. It's also a very good cursed key. With the blue candle.
Neko with Corruption is one of my favorite combos. Neko Dual Wield, also very strong. I think it goes well with the Blood for Blood, with the Whirlwind. I do like this Neko a lot. Doesn't Neko break card draw scaling? Yes, yeah, sort of. It is card draw scaling, though, is the thing. So it turns us into a deck that just wants to Corruption. Um, Sneko does steer us back in the limit break direction, by the way. <laughs> yeah, taking the Sneko Eye means relying on Corruption, whereas taking one of the other energy relics means trying to do second wind power through evolve combo. Hmm. It's actually a bit of a tough call. Two different directions for the deck here. Potential that the Coffee Dripper is better than the Curse Key. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Cursed Wolf. This just popped into my head. Um, did you hear about the locksmith who was invited to speak at a big conference? They were the keynote speaker. That is all. I have a hard time with Sneko on f three base energy, but it's a lot more manageable with Art of War and uh, Lantern. We do the heart thing. Got some good good stuff going for heart. Bottled Evolve might make these a bit more consistent. Mm hmm. I think I'm going to put my life in Sneko here, but I'm not 100% on this. All right, we do want to go elite hunting this act. Get as many relics as we can. And it looks like we can do four elites if we want to. Not sure how viable that is. Stopping into one shop early is a good idea. We can maybe remove... There's still a clash of the deck, right? Yeah, there is. Would Sneko Eye be better without the cost randomization? Oh, yeah. If a boss relic just said draw two more cards per turn, it would be very, very, very strong. Obscenely so. Hmm, we could maybe take 999 gold, potentially. Let's take a quick look at one event here. All right, this is, this is what we want our fights to look like. Turn one... Zero cost corruption is where it's at. Then we punch the ever loving heck out of them. Then they die. It's that easy. Heavy Blade's looking a little better now. I, st I do wish we'd taken the Heavy Blade plus we saw. I'm perfectly happy to take max health at almost every opportunity. Warpwalkers hate this one weird trick. Ooh, dupe a card in the deck. Don't have that many good upgraded cards, unfortunately. We could dupe the Uppercut here. Um, or the Pommel Strike plus, or maybe just the Power Through plus for another really big block card. Actually, yeah, given that we already have a second wind and that we have a corruption, I think a second power through plus is really good. Duping Exhume is also an option. Duping Sentinel is not a terrible option either. 
But I do think the power through is probably one of the best here. Power through or burning pact. With the Sneko Eye, I say the power through. Is my choice for duplication. Pretty lucky to get that overall. Power through Blood for Blood of the Spiker. Let's do that. There we go. Card draw. Get punched. Another power through. We have a bottled evolve, so I say definitely take a third power through. Take another evolve. No. Could buy a prismatic shard here, giving us cards from other colors. One, it's a little bit late in the run for that, and two, that's of questionable utility. Would lower our chances of finding like something like a feel no pain. And we could just remove a card, like, oh, I don't know, Clash? Clash, get out of here. Clash, you're gone. What's the dumbest Transform 2 Nyao high roll that I've gotten? Immolate Rupture Pain? Oh, that's pretty spicy. I feel like I've gotten something like Offering Corruption before. Flash, no. Um, also, Shrug might be okay. Worth buying here. If you have a sh corruption in your deck, there's no such thing as too many Shrugs. Is my usual statement. I think I want to save money, though. I'm going to save the money. Kill all three of these nerds at the same time for this fight to end. Easier said than done, usually. Usually. It's back with a plus. Dinky turn one here against Giant Head. This is not really a fight we can afford to have bricks. But here we are. Working. Flame uppercut blood for blood? Play this for wounds? We'll have to do. Okay, here's corruption. This gets played, this gets played. Need to exhume.
Okay. Promising. Three cost uppercut's not good, but uh, the rest of this looks pretty good. Lots of zero cost stuff. Guess I'll play the uppercut anyway. We'll just dual wield the uh, blood for blood. Bin to win. Keep the uh, extra block cards. I could play these for more slow stacks, but I want to have the option to block again if I need to. Bot doesn't know what the streak is? Hold on. Go home, Bot. You're drunk. Jotunborn with uh, 49 months of support. Afternoon to you. Double Juggernaut. That's right. That's one of our best transforms we've had. Forgot about that one. Double Juggernaut was a good time. Seems good. Alright, this giant hit fight gave me some confidence for the later fights. At least some, though. Akabeko is nice with our turn one whirlwinds. More garbage. Merle says, my favorite transform ever was Double Doppelganger into Chemex for shop. It was so OP. I bet. I bet. That sounds ridiculous. The good kind of ridiculous. But you all nerds are super toast here. 24 per. We take one. Amazing. Good fight. Still total nonsense, but at least our max health is going up. And I think I like a Blessing of the Forge quite a bit for its ability to change the cost of Exhume and Corruption. Let us get another dual wield target. Take that over the Fear Pot. True Grit Plus is good? Yes, True Grit Plus is good. Shame we didn't see a True Grit Plus. Uh oh. <laughs> well, that's not a very good opening hand. Hello? Oh, dear. Um, block Pot, I guess? Sure. <laughs> block Pot time. Seems okay. Alright, it all worked out. Against this enemy, we don't want to attack unnecessarily. Damaging it will change its attack intent, which can turn things worse, can even give us a curse, problematically. Cursed is the worst. For that reason, I usually like to leave one attack unplayed in my hand. Um, so that you have a you always have a reroll available if it changes to curse, essentially. So from here we don't want to further reroll it. As an example. Um, flame barrier is in the exhaust pile. No, it's not. Okay. Those stinky statuses are just here to be second wind fuel. How does Blood for Blood work with Sneko? It is re-randomized every time we draw it. 
Um, but as long as it's in our hand, it gets cheaper each time we're damaged. Here we go. This is the first card that really rewards our Snekoi. Barricade. Block is not removed at the start of our turn. Meaning we can play our power throughs a ton to gain tons of block. And then hoard all the block from the second wind at the end. Which actually makes upgrading second wind look pretty good now. Go home, bot. You're drunk. We have to take the blue key from this chest. Self forming clay would have been really nice. Uh, but we took the kunai instead. Both of those are block relics, I guess. And we're fighting three more elites? It's true, I am. You heard me. It's not a very good first turn, but there's always next turn. That's better. It's quite a bit better. Let's go Pummel Strike. Power through Corruption. Spot Weakness Offering. There is a Whirlwind. Okay, it's like, where's all the Whirlwinds at? Then we can go Barricade, Power Through, Exhum. Power through again. Second wind. Oh my lord. And then three energy whirlwind kills all the daggers here. Not bad. Blonks. The Blunkening. Yeah, good, good fight. Good fight. Although at this point we just have a lot of wounds and not much else, huh? Okay, because we've already won at that point. Molten Egg will upgrade any attacks we choose to add, which is not too many. Any body slammers? Today. Would I take a fire breathing in this deck? Probably not, although it's kind of worth considering with what we're seeing, right? We'd love a way to get rid of these wounds repeatedly, not just the first time. Not playing that evolve is questionable. Very questionable. You get a Mart of War. Good work. Oh, whoops. That's not what I thought was going to happen. Second wind, is that correct? Or seems correct.
definitely run out of block after a, a handful of turns, which means we're going to want some additional help. There's the fire breathing. It does seem like it's a lot of damage, doesn't it? Would I take a feel no pain? I mean... <laughs> Yeah. Take like eight feel no pains. I'll try it. I'm a little uncertain about that, honestly, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Give it a shot. Oof, that's a turn one. Just take 13 to the face to play Evolve in Flame here, or what? If I play Flame Barrier, I get neither power down. I really don't want to do that. Let's just do those. Got healing. Got healing. Okay, so we can do power through... Do I even want more power throughs? Let's just go metallicize corruption. Metallicize power through corruption. There you are, Barricade. Now things are looking a little bit better. Fire breathing gets put in play. Pretty good second wind. We can exhume the second wind. They'll probably do here. Of course, then we have no statuses, so... Air breathing not really doing any work here. You have a solid W, though. Lots of kunai procs that don't do anything. Or a Calcum. If we end our turn with no block, gain six. That can help. Wouldn't say these help that much. Two more card rewards. Didn't even have the decency to die on turn one. Oh, yes, they did. Okay. Thank you. Drop kick, blood for blood, burning pact. I'm down for one more burning pact here. Which act has my favorite overworld music? I think Act 1. Okay, and our last elite will be Reptomancer. not too afraid of here. Hmm. Okay, there's Whirlwind. Dual wield uppercut. Play both uppercuts. We can do blood for blood uppercut. Kill this dagger. This is a kunai too. Let's do that. Repto weak here. Goes for the attack on turn two. Unfortunately, my entire hand is expensive here. So we can't block for very much. Have I won an ironclad run with no card draw mechanics from cards? I have no idea. 
Usually I'm trying to get the card draw mechanics from cards. Good try to use the gambler's brew here. Get towards corruption. It's a pretty valuable uh, gambler's brew. Prefer to have it into Act 3, generally. Um, if I Blessing of the Forge, we can do Power Through, Bloodletting, Second Win. That's pretty good. I could play Bash, or I could get Art of War. Anubis the Reaper, thanks for the Prime sub in the 15 months. I'm going to use this one. No Bash. I need to kill the side beggars this turn. Or else. Cool. This is not enough damage. We need more energy then. That's offering. A nice second wind. Can I use the bloodletting? I don't think so. Okay, feeling quite good here now. Seems like we've more or less solved the fight. Sure have. World winner, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. We get more sources of block, an ornamental fan, blocking for three attacks played, dex potion for more dexterity, and another second win. Feels really good with all these power throws, especially with the eruption. You have to recall here. I am Kunu, thanks for the Prime sub in the 13 months. Did you hear about the Ironclad who couldn't get his fiancé's present removed from her finger? Couldn't get off her ring. Oof. How's it going, World Winner? World Winner says, I've loved watching your YouTube videos and wanted to toss you my prime for the month. You're heckin' welcome. You are heckin' welcome. So against the Awakened One, Barricade is a nice way to scale, particularly with Kunai. Other powers can be tough to work with. Using Whirlwind right away to... kill the birds here is pretty tempting. Let's do that. Second wind would get rid of maybe too many powers. Losing the barricade seems foolish here. Losing corruption in this fight is fine. Losing fire breathing is good. Oh, we can exhume the barricade. You're right, Twitch chat. We can exhume the one power we don't want to lose. Yes. Yes. Let's do that. Let's do that. We can second wind and then headbutt second wind even better. Excellent. Great use for exhume. We do want to use Burning Pack to get rid of cards we don't want here. Play Offering as well. Get rid of Bash. Bash. Make another uppercut instead. Keep activating the Kunai.
There's a multi hit. Questionable one. Exhuming a barricade on this turn seems unlikely. We can exhume it without playing it, at least. Let's do that. Guess it's okay to take a little bit of damage if this is my draw. Not much you can do about that. Take 10. Lots of health to spare, though. Lots of health to spare. Second wind deletes dual wield shrug and flame wound bloodletting. Get rid of all of that, thank you. Good, good. Another multi hit already. We could do barricade flame barrier second wind. That sounds all right. Full block. Okay, okay. Barricades down. All profit from here, baby. And then the game decided to give me only three cost stuff. Because it was rude. Next game. Here we are. All right. Punch. Blap. Power through. Power through. Block. Now we have a nice safety cushion. Wonderful. block. Get in there, kunai. Six six dirty now. Pretty good. Blood for blood good with Sneko. It's okay. I think it's better without Sneko, but it's not bad with Sneko, necessarily. Maybe a little bit weaker. is pulling a lot of work too here. There we go. That wasn't too bad of a fight overall. Nice and comfortable. Nothing to set up relic wise. EG? We have 74 health for the next opponent, who is the Time Eater. Tim the Time Eater. And make things a little challenging for us. Each card play is precious in this fight, as every 12 cards we play will give the Time Eater additional combat strength, as well as forcibly ending our turn. But this is another fight where Barricade can do really good work.
Let's take the kunai proc, though. A whole lot more cards. Let's go uppercut, fire breathing, metallicize, power through, and then our turn ends. Take six here. Now we can go barricade. I want to power through corruption. I'm not sure I want a corruption in this fight just yet. I'll wait on that. Use you. Use you. Okay, fire breathing is starting to do stuff. For better or for worse. Does time eater hits so heckin' hard? We've almost got time eater to half health here. That's good. If we can bring time eater below half health on this turn, then we will prevent a lot of trouble for ourselves. Although it doesn't look like we can. I'm just going to go power through second wind. Block for a bajillion here. The uppercut had done two more damage. There we are. I'll just second win the corruption. Turn that all into block, please. Thank you. Foolish, foolish. I gotta say, this power, th uh, this fire breathing actually is doing pretty good work here. Begrudgingly, I admit it. GG. Breathed to death. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? You ready, your blade dealing 2143 damage. Pretty good year. We stride into Act 4. We're missing seven hit points. We could rest to get a card reward and potentially two more max health from Singing Bull. Or we could upgrade a card, and I think upgrading either the Fire Breathing, based on how that last boss fight went, maybe one of our second wins, or perhaps... Uh, hmm, or what else? Or uh, perhaps Dual Wield to make another copy of a zero-cost card is pretty good. But I do actually think the upgrade on Fire Breathing is pretty substantial in terms of late-game damage here. The evolve, the evolve upgrade, not that important because of the Snekawai. We're drawing, so for example, turn two of Shield and Spear. We're currently drawing seven cards. Two of those will be burns. So with an unupgraded Evolve in play, we'll draw two more for nine cards. If we upgrade Evolve, we get one more draw per burn, except 
your hand can't be more full than full, 10 cards, right? So we actually only draw one more card on turn two of Shield and Spear for the Evolve upgrade, which is still nice, but it's it's definitely not that impactful. And then in the heart fight, we're very likely to run into just handful situation. What are some of the metrics the games considers to determine the heart damage at the end of Act 3? Um, the list of score modifiers you can find on the Slay the Spire wiki, but it's mostly stuff like uh, beating bosses and elites without taking damage. There's also rewards for having found over a thousand gold during the run, for increasing your max health by 15 or 30, um, for getting more than 25 relics, and a few other things. Uh, there's a special bonus for having no duplicate cards in the deck. There's a special bonus for having 35 or 50 cards. There's a special bonus for having a run timer under an hour. You others. Great fire breathing. All right, and what is in the shop? Oh, we could buy the waffle. And then it's like we rested and... There's another pummel strike here. As far as potions go, I rather like the current potions. I'm down for Waffle card remove. Yeah, there's the link to, to score modifiers. Score wiki, thank you. Is it time to remove Combust? I think it is. How bad is Panacea? Pretty bad. It doesn't do a whole lot unless we draw it on turn one, which is unlikely. Very unlikely. So I'm just going to remove the Combust. And we'll, uh, I guess we'll see how this goes. Not entirely convinced this is going to go well, although uh, Corruption turn one in this fight is very helpful. And I will definitely be playing Corruption into Offering here. No questions asked. All of the free skills, please. And then what, Exhume Offering played again? Yeah. Good. Um, how much damage is this? 16 times 7 is only 112, so we're not killing a Spire Shield quite yet. But if I draw into Sentinel, we are. So let's keep drawing. No luck. Okay, that's fine. I still think I try to kill the shield first. We'll draw with pommel. Yes, yes, we can. Twitch chat. We can. But then we lose the Akabeko and the whirlwind does no damage. Can do it after Whirlwind, huh? Let's see. 16 times 7 is 112. This goes to 122. It's on 3 health. The Flame Barrier will kill it. That's actually kind of cool. I think that's worth missing Barricade for, is getting the Spire Shield kill on turn 1. Especially with this draw on the open, uh, coming up. Let's do it. Um, and then we want a second wind, I guess? We do, right? The full block this. Yeah. Yeah, and we can easily deal with this turn.
Normally would want to barricade there, but this fight's over. This fight is super over. Nice. Ooh, power potion. Disarm. Wow. Okay, that'll help a lot against heart. The boot is almighty. But yeah, power potion. We're going to want a power potion here. Power potion could be a feel no pain or something else. Question is, do I take it over the Dex Pot or the Gambler's Brew? I think both are pretty good. I guess over the Dex Potion. I like that Dex Potion, though. But still, Dark Embrace would be better. Feel No Pain would be better. Okay, we'll lose the Dex Pot. Gamble can save us in the first cycle really, really helpfully seems too important. Turn 1, 0 cost barricade looking really nice. Turn 1 uppercut also pretty good here. And I think we do want a power potion turn 1 as well. Demon form. Two strength per turn. Surely that's better than two dexterity would have been. I don't think we're going to play Corruption right away. Because I want to play the Evolve. I want to play the Barricade. I want to play this Uppercut. Although we should maybe Burning Pact here. Burning Pact the Metallicize. Let's see what else is in here. Okay, we got Sentinel. Sentinel, Demon Form, Barricade, Evolve. We'll get to retain or a Calcum Block into turn two. Heart is weak into turn two. Seems pretty good. Or now we could play Corruption, too, if we just want to go right away. With the Demon Form, we might be able to pull that off, actually. Uh, although that still means missing Uppercut, right? If I play the Corruption. Oh, corruption, then Sentinel, two energy left, which is for Evolve. So we either skip the Uppercut or we skip the Evolve. Now, I'll wait on Corruption until the second time we see it. We have the Gambler's Brew to make that happen faster if we need it. So let's go Sentinel, Demon Form, Barricade, Evolve, Uppercut. Don't play this. So six block, that gets retained. We have 100 effective health going into turn two here, and it is the big hit first, which is probably for the best, actually. Um, hopefully next turn we get the Disarm. Not a very good turn one. We could Flame Barrier, then Headbutt Corruption. That's actually not a bad idea. Pretty weak turn all around. Don't want to gamblers brew immediately after headbutting corruption, because then I can't afford to play any of the card. I can't afford to play the corruption. So let's have the Corruption fresh next turn. Still not even sure it is Corruption next turn. Hoping to play Disarm next turn. And not much else. But yeah, let's, let's put Corruption on top. Yeah, we'd also like to use the Gambler's Brew to get Disarm to save a lot of health. We don't find it. Okay. This is definitely a good turn for the Gambler's Brew. 
we gamble everything except Corruption Void? Yeah, that'll guarantee disarm, actually. Yeah, let's do that. In fact, uh, yeah, yeah, I want to draw that Dazed again, too. Actually, Fire Breathing costs three, but we can play Offering to get Fire Breathing in play, and I think we should do that. Corruption, Disarm, Offering, Fire Breathing? Sounds pretty good. This arm takes us from 3 by 15 all the way down to 0. And we get to keep all of that block with the uh, stuff. Could have dual wielded that dis that uh, fire breathing. I don't feel like that was the right play, though. Um, and I don't really want to play these while I'm frail. We should wait until next turn. Mixed feelings at the moment as to how this is going. We got mixed feelings here. I haven't gotten Kunai to do anything yet, by the way. This looks like a really good second win turn. Zooming Disarm here would be completely useless, because the heart is about to purge negative strength. I think Zooming Sentinel is okay. Or Offering if I want to draw more. Just draw more. That skull value here. Lots of block. As much block as you can get. Oof, what a bad turn, though. Probably I want to dual wield the uppercut. So that we can stack our debuffs again. It was a garbage turn, though. This could go badly here. We survived this hit, but I'm not sure about what comes next. Uppercut is good, though. Um, let's get Kunai before we play that second wind. So this is effectively all the block we get for the whole fight, which is worrying. However... We get a buff turn, and then the next attack turn we survive, and all we have to do is kill before we get attacked one more time. So I think we actually might have it here, as our whirlwinds are doing very substantial damage at this point. Ooh, although I can't quite kill it next turn, so we have to survive one more turn. Good news is we always do that with this much block. Spooky. The demon form has been ticking away, and we have just enough strength to get the kill on this turn. We would be dead if we didn't have the kill here. So, wow, what a close run. GG. Witch chat. GG. We're through with a W. I'll take it. I will take it. GG. Definitely a tough one. Definitely, definitely a tough one. GG.
just a few cards away from being bonkers, really just needed one Feel No Pain or one Entrench to be particularly broken. But we did well with what we had. Very happy with that run. Definitely tough at some spots. You see fire breathing stats? No. It's not a thing. Willie the Trink, thanks for the prime sub and the nine months. And the congratulations. Streak has fixed itself. Heck yeah. I also see that a dad joke was redeemed during that stream of congratulations. All right, here's one for you. Why did the poor woman become a baker? She really needed the dough. No refunds. Prediction for run number nine? Yeah, you can do that, Failing. You can run a prediction today. Wager those channel points and decide. Are you on team Baylor's going to get there or team Baylor's going to not get there? GG. 68 damage over 9 turns. That was definitely close. I certainly do wonder what this run looks like if we don't take the Sneko Eye here. I think it means not playing Corruption in the heart fight. It's probably what it means. Scary, scary heart fight. All right, 8 out of 20. Before we jump into another run, of course, it is going to be break time. So I'm going to refill my legs, stretch my water. Back in a couple of minutes, Twitch chat. And we're going to be going for number nine in a row with Ironclad. Finally, we've got a good streak going here. I'm quite happy with it. Be right back, everybody. Don't go nowhere.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Get your channel points in while you can. Will this run be a glorious success? Or will it all end in flames with the ironclad here as we step up to the plate for win number potentially nine or in a row? If the challenge was just a 15 streak, do I think it would take half as long as a 20 streak? It would take less time, that's for sure. I'm not I'm not sure. Might be that they take the same amount of time, that our first streak above 15 will be a 20. Darth Malaku with the Prime sub. Happy New Year to you. And Grundle Flex. Thanks for the five months and keeping it cozy. Let us see what we're up to. Max health options. Hmm. Not the most inspiring Act 1 layout, but uh, it will work. I'm looking at something like this. That does speak to maybe lose all gold for 99 max, or for uh, 14 max health. We could also upgrade our bash, making it 10 damage, 3 vuln early. That can help quite a bit too. Hey, Turbocot, grats on your first A20 heart win with defects. Calipers, double bias cog, that'll do it. I am tempted by the max health here. Early bash upgrade is a little bit weaker because of uh, because of Lagavulin, but I still think it's perfectly fine. Against Lagavulin, even. I haven't done an upgrade bash in a while. Let's do it. I really like how it makes your uh, Jawworm and Cultist fight from the opening combats a lot safer. That part feels especially good to me. For example, here we can bash defend, then next turn I can double defend if we don't get triple strike. We do get triple strike. Okay, so the start, we get a flex potion, that's good. I'm very happy with Hemokinesis first card. This does lots of damage for one energy, which is exactly what you want for killing elites. It's also exactly what you want for killing slime boss. I like it a lot more than Clothesline, which is a little underpowered in Act 1, I tend to feel. Uh-oh. I'm willing to click three times here. Probably not more than three. Here we can trade health for a chance at a relic repeatedly. The more we click, the higher the chance goes, but the more the health that you have to pay. And you can definitely lose a lot of health to this. One, ouch, two, ouch, and three, success. We get a freaking pocket watch. Bets are closed, by the way. Get a freaking pocket watch, first relic. That is perhaps the strongest of the rare relics for Ironclad. Letting you have very, very strong runs. If we play three or fewer cards on our turn, we draw three additional cards on the next turn. And Ironclad with the starting deck is actually incapable of playing more than three cards per turn. So this thing gives you three draw per turn every turn, which is ridiculous. Simply ridiculous. And those big hands give you very consistent draws, which make early elites no threat whatsoever. I might take a power throw here. Headbutt's a pretty good attack card, but power throw is a very premium block. And it means we can grab a fire breathing or evolve later on. Yeah, like Snekowine with no random cost. How much hit points would I have been willing to pay if I'd known it was Pocket Watch? I would have paid 50 health for it. Easy. Easy 50 health. Like, I, as long as we don't die to the first three encounters here, and I'm allowed to rest, I'll pay all of my health for the Pocket Watch. 
Thinking that power through. Normally the wounds make this a block card that's not really worth playing, but if you draw eight per turn, the wounds are not a problem until you play it a couple times. We could do Strike, Strike, Defend, take seven, or Hemokinesis, Defend, Defend, take six. Slightly better. Knowing when not to play the Hemokinesis is, is an important part of using it well. It's extra damage when we need it, but only when we need it. And if we don't have to play it, we should avoid doing so. That's a freaking Dark Embrace. And no good attacks either, so I'll take the freaking Dark Embrace. When a card is exhausted, draw a card, it says. Probably my favorite power on the clad. Very useful in conjunction with lots of things. Although, ow. Turn ones are going to be a bit weak still. Kind of inevitable. How about a True Grit to go with that Dark Embrace? Leaves us a little bit short on damaging cards, but that's where the Pocket Watch comes in, with big, consistent draws each turn. We might want to consider upgrading Hemokinesis. Help us with the Elites coming up, but we might also want to just consider upgrading True Grit here for really consistent blocks. Let's upgrade that True Grit. On a scale of 1 to 10, how high is my Nervous level for the streak? We're starting to get up to about a three or four nervousness, nervousness level for the streak. In this current run, I'm currently at about a one out of ten because of Pocket Watch. I'm very confident right now. So I am not that nervous at the moment. Uh-oh. Nervousness increasing. Hmm. That's a bad draw. I think I've got to go power through Bash here. This is definitely going to hurt next turn. I, I'm going to do Strike, Hemokinesis, Defend probably. We'll take 14 minus 5, take 9. Take 9 plus 3. We're losing 6 health in this fight. That's not, uh, well, 8 health in this fight. That's not that bad. I know the Elites are going to be easy, so I'm not afraid here. Could use the Flex Potion to kill one there, which would have helped a little bit. Not a lot, though. We don't take any more damage from here. This is now fine. How do I know they all attack? Well, the gray ones only ever attack, and the green ones alternate attacking and debuffing. So on turn two, they always all attack. Cars draw. Using a potion would have helped a little bit. We want another big attack. Perfected Strike works out okay here. I don't like it much with the Dark Embrace True Grit thing, though. I don't think we need it with Hemokinesis here. Well, it helps in Slime Boss, too. Oh, fine. I'll take it just for safety here. If I want to fight Elites, we should take it. This fight will be nice and easy with Dark Embrace, especially. Let's do True Grit first, then Dark Embrace. There's a strike here. Gonna have absolutely enormous card draw during this battle. We can slowly whittle down our opponents. Slowly but steadily.
drawing probably 10 cards every single turn. Like a truly ludicrous amount of cards. Gonna bother taking one to add two wounds. That doesn't seem worth it. That's worth it, though. Hemokinesis Strike Strike will kill now. That should be the last time we have to play Hemo. Omamori negates the first two curses we might obtain. Freaking offering. Yoink. Pommel Strike's okay with the Perfected Strike, but I'm taking freaking offering. Great card for the card draw and burst energy. Just like Hemokinesis, you don't always have to play it. And also like last run, Toy Ornithopter gives us five health per potion, making that offering a bit more affordable. Very good start so far. Very good start so far. Happy to see Lagavul in here as well. Probably going to use the Fear Potion in this fight. Let's get rid of a basic defense here. The next turn we Fear Pot and three attacks, probably. Unless I bought Draw Bash. Hmm. Okay. Strike does okay damage. Hemo is a lot better here, though. At least one more defend. Okay, we got offering. Let's do Hemokinesis offering. Perfected strike. You know, let's bash. We're drawing power through next turn. Bash defend. Power through, hopefully defend. Power through true grid is good. And then we can strike one time. And now the goal is to kill in the next two turns, which shouldn't be too hard with the Vuln here. He striked us 27. Hemo would kill right away, but it looks like we don't need to play Hemo, because if we strike, we bring it to 12. And each of these next turn will deal 6. So we guaranteed kill with those strikes. No need to Hemokinesis. Pretty good Lagavulin fight. Our hit points barely moved in this battle. We get a happy flower for more energy, as well as a decent potion. And a flame barrier, which is one of my favorite block cards with Pocket Watch. Block and damage back. Although we're hurting a little bit for attack damage. I think we're fine. We have so much card draw. Let's take one flame barrier here. I'm probably not going to add too many more cards this act. Maybe one more decent damage card. A pommel strike would be good. A strength card would be good. But we don't need anything like that, necessarily. Just kind of a, a luxury. 14 incoming. I can power through True Grit Strike. Or I can play the Flame Barrier. Take four health off each of them. I think I'd rather remove the Curl Up. Especially on you. Let's do this. Ready the Great, thanks for the Prime Sub and the five months. For being cozy when life isn't, indeed. I can welcome. Life do be hard sometimes.
be Flower turn two with Pocket Watch, I think. Rather than turn one. A second perfected strike? Um, sure. Yeah, makes them both do more damage. Doesn't matter as much if we exhaust a card. I like that. I think I like that. If only I'd drawn them both. We can do Perfected Strike, Defend, Defend, though. Next turn, kill with Perfected Strike. Take one, heal five. I like that. Could use a potion here to try to heal an extra five in case we get another one, but I don't think that's particularly worth it here. We did get another potion, but I like the current potions just fine. Lex, Ghostly Armor, Seeing Red. Eh. You could maybe make an argument for Seeing Red with the Dark Embrace and the Pocket Watch, but it's not that good. Semiyama. Which relic is best when you're having trouble defending? The Block It Watch. <laughs> flex is okay with our card draw, but we can't play very many attacks alongside the Flex. And if we use the Flex alongside a lot of attacks, then we're not getting more draw on the next turn. That means the flex is not as good as you might want it to be here. Especially unupgraded. Um, upgrading one of the peace strikes might be a good idea before slime boss. Let's skip these. These jerks again. Probably don't need to play hemokinesis as many times this time around, thanks to the perfected strikes. I even have the extra energy to Flame Barrier, or I could just play True Grit here. Or I could do Dark Embrace Offering. But I think if we just Flame Barrier, we're fine here. Simply drawing 8 per turn ought to be sufficient, for the most part. Oh, I lied. Punch. 15, 21, 31. So we actually kill it if I flex potion here. We're at 30 plus 40 for a new potion. All right, let's do that. But only because we had Tor Ornithopter, I think, was that worth it. We do get a potion back, so that was well rewarded. We also get Red Skull again. Very similar relics to last time, actually. If we're below half health, we have additional strength. And hey, you know what card goes really, really well with Pocket Watch? Body slam. You heard me. <laughs> Ooh, lose 11 health? Go to 37 health, you say? 37. Hmm. Okay. Step, thanks for the three months, an easy three-step program to subbing to me. Now, Body Slam here seems very, very good because of Dark Embrace, because of True Grit, because of Power Through. I think Body Slam will become very strong. Le Bonk, indeed. And I think I actually want to upgrade this Body Slam to be zero cost. Are we doing Sneko things? I don't think so. Maybe we are, but I doubt it. Could also upgrade uh, Perfected Strike. Let's do Body Slam first. 
It does seem a little bit weird to have a zero cost card with Pocket Watch, but there will be times when it lines up just perfectly. Also, turn one upgraded Bash. Good value from that starting upgrade. Um, probably just play Offering here and go for the biggest split possible. That seems great. It's fine. Look at this. 16 health. I mean, yeah, we just win, right? We just win. Not bad. Reaper with Red Skull is kind of cool. Zoom can get back Offering. Bit odd with Pocket Watch. Double Tap can duplicate the Perfected Strike. Probably Reaper is my best pick here as a way to stay high on health. It's a good Pocket Watch card in general. I'd rather have an Impervious or a Barricade of these options, but we don't have an Impervious or a Barricade here. Maybe Exhume is better in the long run. You could say Reaper gives some AoE, but I really wouldn't count it as doing that. Just like having some healing. Cursed Key Omomori seems like very good value. Also take Sacred Bark for double strength potions or Slaver's Collar for energy just during the boss and elite fights. But Cursed Key is a very good energy relic here. We'll get a curse when we open a non-boss chest, but we negate the next two curses we would obtain. So it's basically free energy. Seems good. All right, let's slow down a little bit here. Hmm. Wow, what a <laughs> hmm, what a garbage layout. <laughs> Bummer. That is awkward. So either I go double shop early, with 400 gold by the way, or I go to the shop after the burning elite, which is terrifying. I mean, not getting very many elites this act, but if we're doing Body Slam, Dark Embrace things, I don't think I need to fight very many elites. Our act boss is Bronze Automaton, who I'm not afraid of at the moment. I really like removing two cards at two shops. So yeah, let's go to the double shop line. Excuse you. Rude. There's Flame Barrier when you need it. That's not funny. Hmm. This is why we need removals. Too many strikes in this deck. Slam won't be enough. Might need to use a potion here. I'm down to use the attack potion. Let's use the attack potion. Squish. Get flame barrier.
Another turn where I can't do much. More like lame barrier. There we go. Get toasted. Almost strikes may be okay. Otherwise, this is pretty stinky. Even the inflame. Let's skip these. Mango Pickle, thanks for the prime sub. Uh, you keep watching, I'll keep streaking. Uh, streaking. Actually, wait, you're right, Twitch chat. And Flame with Reaper is going to pay for itself pretty well. Sure, okay. Strikes for Bites. We just established a way to heal, so I don't think I need to remove my strikes. In trench, interesting. Double dark embrace. Double dark embrace in trench. Curious, curious. And then blood vial immediately, right? That's funny. That in trench is tempting. Especially where we're going. Yeah, let's. We're gonna be, start with removing strikes here. And I think Dark Embrace and Trench? I think so. Hope that's correct. We'll buy a potion here if I don't have one. Hmm. Dark Embrace struck. Entirely convinced playing those was correct, but here we are. Do 35 damage in one turn, that'd be nice. We super can't do that. Super can't do that. Uh, unless I'm willing to liquid memories here, which I am not. Oh, garbage. It's not a good sign if this fight goes long. Okay, here we go. Maybe I can even regain some of my health here. Build for six, take two, win. Yeah, it's worth it. Okay. Odd fight. Big slam is back. Sever Soul is kind of interesting. Rather have a fiend fire or something. Brimstone is here. We could have Brimstone with two Reapers. Brimstone requires better strength scaling than this usually to feel good. I wouldn't consider this a particularly good Brimstone. I'd rather go uh, card remove block pot, probably. Probably. That's a very good block potion, actually. Yeah, you don't like this brimstone? Me neither. I, I don't think this is a good brimstone. Brimstone is not where this deck is headed. This deck wants to uh, barricade, body slam, and trench stuff. 
what it wants to do. But first I have to get through the Gremlin Leader. It's easier said than done. bad. I'm not going to play Body Slam because I want to draw three more next turn. Okay. I'm very not good at killing minions here, so this is definitely spooky. Gonna have to make one really powerful turn happen. Okay. Okay. No whammy yet. Good. We could bash P strike. Next turn is the good turn, I think. Next turn, we should win. We have extra energy, and we could use the potions for additional body slam power if we need to. Hmm, that's kind of garbage. Reaper draws two, huh? I use both potions. 12 block, 24 block. 29 block. Goes to 44. So we do 44, 44, 24. Plus flame barrier damage. That's enough, right? Yeah, that's 112, so that kills. If I use both potions here, which I think I'm willing to do. This is a very scary turn. We block potion to make the body slam bigger. Liquid memories to get body slam back, taking double damage on that uh, block potion, essentially. Let's see, and this would deal four to all. Dying the second hit. Six. So we heal for four, four, six. It's fourteen. Heal for fourteen. Take thirteen. So by my calculation, Reaper is one better than Perfected Strike here. If we just Perfected Strike, then we just win. But if I Reaper, I heal for fourteen. Take thirteen damage. Right. Go down to nineteen block. We get hit. You take damage, we go to three block. We take 13 damage, you die. Yeah, so this is one more health. We'll go to 61 rather than 60 here. Wait, what? What went wrong there? Oh, because two Flame Barrier hits wasn't uh, 10 damage. That's why. Okay. Yeah, I did that wrong. That was on me. Whoops. That's okay, though. We've got lots of health to spare. Yeah, I, I did that wrong. My mistake. What point do I decide to remove Perfected Strike over Normal Strike? Not very often. Hmm. I'll read your book. What's it about? Ooh, that's a good book. That's a pretty good book. 
First attack we play each turn, costing two or more, is played twice. Upon pickup, we also gain a... Oh, no, we don't. No, we don't. Did I get away with going to this fight on 24 health? I sure hope so. Sure hope so. I think I upgrade Reaper now. <laughs> Is if Reaper's getting played twice, then the upgrade actually matters quite a bit. Plus two healing per target. Let's do that. Okay, not dying on turn one. That's good. Bonk, bonk. There is no escape from the Necronomicers. But is there escape from Reaper? 12 plus 12. They want to play it now, huh? This heals 24 just off the Centurion. Twenty-four plus twenty-seven is more than forty-nine, so I can play strike here, heal a little bit more, right? Strike, double reaper, hemo. Sounds good. Oh, but we lose the red skull. Ah, oh, shoot. That's right. Fair enough. This game is hard. Still got a lot of health out of that. I'm not too worried here. But yes, that's another slightly embarrassing moment. Pocket watch here. I played Dead Cells a little bit. I thought it was okay. Wouldn't say I was overly thrilled with it or anything. Okay, we actually still got a lot of health out of that fight, so I don't need to rest here. We can upgrade now. Here's another way to gain some strength in spot weakness. I think with the double reaper ring, that sounds very good. Oh, I missed the inflame too. Whoops. That's fine. I think our block card's a bit better. We're confused and we draw eight cards per turn. It's like having a real Sneko eye. It's like a Heko eye. This is bad. So do 24 twice. 24 twice plus 22. 48 plus 22 is 80. Is that not correct? Or is it 70? No, it's 70. That's not enough. So double Reaper then. Heal 14, take 18. Bummer. Strike gets duplicated as of uh, Necronomicers. If it costs two, it gets played twice, even if it's not really two costs. I can get a little bit more healing, so let's try to do that. Okay, we can do Dark Embrace, Body Slam. No, Dark Embrace, Flame Barrier, Body Slam. Cool. Iron Wave, Plus, Pummel? 
Pummel's not that bad. Eh. Skip. Bummer. I missed two relics because of this curse key. Even with the Omomori, this was not that good at curse key. It's a bit of a shame. We leave this unopened. Do I think the deck can take on the Elites of Act 3 in its current state? Potentially. We're actually getting pretty close to being able to do some really nasty stuff to uh, Act 3 enemies. I'm going to upgrade Spot Weakness here, since we might be using this card multiple times. Our goal in the Bronze Automaton fight is play the Dark Embraces and then kind of exhaust the deck down to just a subset of cards that so we can use the Entrench, the Power Through, and the Body Slam. I'll even lose the Flame Barrier here. I just want fewer cards. But if we play the power through, we get wounds, and those will mess with us. Gotta be careful about that. Right, skull is active. Perfect. We get double perfected strike, then we can play the Dark Embrace. Okay. Burn could hurt. It does not. Double Reaper now is pretty reasonable. Get rid of the defend. Get rid of Reaper. Sounds good. Actually, get rid of this strike. Ah, uh, no, the defend. And then we've already broke the pocket watch, so I might as well body slam here. You can hold on to that for a moment. I'll take that next turn. Thank you. Let's let the Pocket Watch draw more cards with the Hyper Beam here. Beautiful. We've got Offering. We go True Grit. This can go now. True Grits keep drawing True Grits. Feels good. Then we go Entrench Body Slam. Very decisive boss fight. She really shows off what the deck is capable of here. And that's without even uh, having a, a barricade. It's really a good time for barricade to show up. Feeds all right. Uh, offering might be better to get this deck set up quicker. The faster we can get both Dark Embraces down, the faster we can exhaust cards from the deck, the better this is going to work. So I think double offering is worth it here.
And the boss relic. Come on, pyramid. Coffee dripper. Coffee dripper seems fine. We get even more energy per turn, meaning we can really put this massive card draw to good use. And we can no longer rest at rest sites, but we have healing from the bird face turn. We have healing from the reaper. It's about as free as it gets, indeed, the dripper. You could make an argument for Velvet Choker with the Pocket Watch. Um, but there are turns where we want to play lots of cards. So, Dripper it is. And this feels like a very solid rel relic bar. We don't have all that many relics because we've skipped two from chests. And we didn't fight very many elites in Act 2. However, looks like that's all going to turn around here. We get uh, one, two, maybe three elites, as, as well as a bunch of upgrades this act, which feels pretty good. I'd like to upgrade my, maybe my Dark Embraces to make them easier to play. I'd love to upgrade the Power Through and maybe the Flame Barrier as well. All of our initial blocking cards could really do with uh, upgrades. You'll never take me alive. Stinky Darklings. Hard to use Pocket Watch with the uh, double attacks from Necronomicers, though. Forget the attack then, just draw more cards. Attacking is for suckers. That's what I've learned. The three months, thank you for keeping it cozy. It is time. Power through? Yes, take this Evolve. That way when we draw status cards, it's not so bad, and it's another way to heal for two. This jerk should be easy, as long as I take it seriously. Let the pocket watch draw rather than playing more powers there. So that we get the attack that kills. Triple perfected strike. No, we don't want more perfected strike nonsense. Keep the fire pot for a Reptomancer dagger or something. Or these jerks. Oh my lord, these jerks. Why are you so jerk?
Don't mind me, I'll just be taking all this health back. Easy peasy. Armaments. Do I want to cleave? I really doubt that I want cleave. I think I want armaments either. Ooh, 999 gold, huh? Only I had an Omomori charge left. Fighting a boss for a rare relic is usually a pretty good deal. We also get some money from this. Or we could upgrade all of our cards and prevent ourselves from healing, which is uh, not the worst thing. Although with double offering, it, it kind of is. Also with Reaper, of course. No, it's, it's pretty bad. Great timing, though. We'd have to live with one normality in the deck, which I don't think is acceptable. As we're trying to shrink this deck anyway. Plus we get an immediate rare relic, which could be quite good. The heck with you, Slimbo. Quite the right word. Oh well. Seems good. Yeah, whatever. Tricky, tricky. Guess I'll be back for that Reaper then. work for a champion belt when we apply vulnerable also apply one week that makes uh bash a bit better disarm is here to remove strengths from an enemy as well or immolate for some very valuable aoe if we're worried about reptomancer we could take an immolate i'm not worried about reptomancer so i will take a disarm And do I look at the orary here for a whole bunch of card rewards? Get to look at five card rewards from orary. We'd be looking for barricade primarily, but also feel no pain. A few other things. Let's let's see what's here. Burning pact is good. Whirlwind is good. There's a nice uh, AOE card. We don't actually need entrench unless we get another barricade. Oh oh. <laughs> well, never mind. Good talk. Arma plus. Impervious. Okay, well, I think we win. <laughs> I'll take impervious, armaments, barricade, entrench, burning pact. Now that's an orary. Holy crap. Good talk. How much for keeping the deck small, right? <laughs> Just add five cards. No, it's fine, though. They're really good cards. They're really good cards. Do I buy a potion here? Ancient Pot might be good enough into heart that I might want it now. It saves me a lot of health. I'm going to do that. Spend the last of my money on a potion that I know is very good. 
for the end game here. Ah. Thought I wanted the whirlwind only if I didn't get a barricade, but barricade meant that uh, entrench was better than whirlwind. Freaking barricade, man. All right, giant head, let's show you what I can do. This is going to be bad for you. Really bad for you. Two turns a week, six turns of vulnerable. Seems good. Barry, where are you? My dear friend Barry, he's gone missing. There you are. With Barricade, we get to retain all of our block each turn, and that means we can do some very, very silly things. Usually. Sometimes we draw hot garbage, though, apparently. Okay, Reaper will heal us. So we can go power through, true grit, bend plus, entrench, entrench. Now I have 150 block. Is it ever optimal to make pick a second barricade in a run in order to make it more likely you draw the first one quicker? I have done that before. So yes, sometimes. I'd say it's relatively rare, but definitely sometimes. One thousand damage. to max block. Boom. Get plus one strength. That helps a little bit. We get a third copy of Entrench, which I'm going to click on. Because why not? Why the ever-loving heck not? Um, we're not going to open this chest because it would curse me. Same as the one we skipped in Act 2. We say, no thank you, no curses. Just use this deck to crush the Spire. I wonder if I wanted to double bash one of these nerds. I think I made a mistake here. Eh, kind of. Looks like a good time to block potion, right? Because I doubled my block twice, so this block potion is worth 48 block on this turn. I should have done pocket watch last turn. Oh well, we preserved some block, that's good. Good potion. Please. Uh, please stop. Oh my. Ouch. Thankfully, we have a way to get our health back. Still, um, ouch. Max 
next to massive card draw, we can make a lot happen. Good. Bonk. Why is it better to exhaust a strike than a wound? Because of evolve, basically. We already get bonus draw when we draw the wounds. We don't get that when we draw the strikes. Double disarm. Transient. Um, actually could be a problem for us here. Come back to my Reaper. Uh, just play the Inflame. Take 40. I need to draw more cards next turn. Fine. Thanks for the Red Skull value. Ouch. Yeah, we have a good turn here. We can Barricade, Impervious, and Trench Body Slam. That'll work. Keep going, actually. There we go. So hopefully we can draw back into Reaper and get some of this health back. Skyfur with the Prime Sub and the two months of support. Thank you, thank you. Reaper guaranteed next turn. That's actually quite good. Um, also, I believe that I win. <laughs> 1,000 damage. All right, let's go. Uh, full heal, by the way. Full heal, then kill the transient. In case you were wondering about this matchup. One, two, four, three. Second wind. Perfect. And another block pot, also perfect. Ridiculous. Simply ridiculous, I say. And I think we upgrade these in trenches, although upgrading the Dark Embrace is also sort of tempting here. All right, our last elite will be not Reptomancer again, thankfully. It's Giant Head. Give us some stuff. Perfect. Foolish, foolish. Bonk. Mummified Hand. When we play a power card, a random card in our hand will become zero cost. I super didn't need that, but I really like it. Don't need these either. Seems kind of handy. <laughs> Something useful about this, but I can't quite put my finger on it. 
basically we just get to play even more stuff. Which is, well, very good. Barricade, impervious, and everything else. Double entrench seems okay. Seems ridiculous. Them. Yeah, very, very cool deck we've got on this run. This is one of my favorite clad runs we've had in a while. We did a, a body slam barricade shenanigans previously, but this is pulling it off a lot better than last time we saw it. Let's upgrade the last entrench here. All right, we're on to our first boss fight. Tim the Time Eater. Time Eater should be very easy for this deck because we have multiple disarms to reduce time eater's strength. Um, we get rewarded for playing fewer cards with Pocket Watch, and we can accumulate tons of block pretty easily. So I'm really not worried here. We can easily exhaust all the unimportant stuff in this deck. Bash is two turns a week and a lot of Vuln. I don't think I need it, though. Grab a spot weakness and then stop. Yeah, three more cards next turn. The waiting on Barricade. If an intelligent adversary chose my draw order exactly for Act 4, at this point, do I think I would still win? No way. No way. If you look at the worst possible draw order for endgame fights... It is nearly impossible to create a deck that can that can win. Because, you know, the heart debuffs you turn one, turn two, you draw all five statuses, and you take 67 damage. Then what? Your opening draw is going to be all of the block cards. Basically, your adversary is going to be a huge jerk. That's what I'm saying here. And you can't set up on turn one, because your adversary will prevent you from doing that. It's just a pocket watch here. Foolish. Foolish. Hmm. This should also be pretty easy. Even though the Awakened One gains strength per power we play, we really only need to play the Barricade and then Entrench over and over again. I'll keep this Impervious around. Who's the food now, Tim? Fool, rather. Who's the fool now? 
Timbo Jimbo. Okay, but I do need to kill these birds, though. I do need to kill these birds. Or else. Let's do this. It's not quite a KO, huh? That's spookier than I realized. Rugrit Disarm Body Slam. Probably want a block potion here. Although not yet, right? Not yet. Not until it's actually killing us. Which is not currently. I'm not going to play the Dark Embrace, as it's going to make this turn even spookier, and it'll also prevent me from pocket-watching properly. We take... 35? Yeah, we're fine here. Draw 8 next turn. What do you mean you got to respect a fight? Yeah, indeed. What do you mean? He's fine. You go Arma, Flame Barrier, Entrench, Entrench, Disarm. Second wind? Yeah, we can second wind now. Okay, this looks fine. Kill you two. Now we should be able to get back to full health, no problem. I mean, I still have the spot weakness, which I do. Too impossible to lose from here, thankfully. Time to farm for full HP, no kappa. That's what we're gonna do. Won't take long, even, even, because of how powerful our Reaper is. That's already enough. Let's do one more um, spot weakness, though. There we go. That should be enough. Bonk. Okay, full health. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of all this blocketing. You ready your blade dealing 2189. Good year. What lets us keep our block between turns? That is the power barricade. Block is not removed at the start of the turn. And yes, this basic deck is, I wouldn't say impossible to do without the barricade, but it's so, so, so much stronger with the barricade because you can keep doubling your block with these entrenches. There's also the relic calipers that allows you to retain your block minus 15 from turn to turn, and that kind of helps. Evolve upgrade looks pretty good. Let's upgrade the evolve here. There's a few decent options. Boot thingy. Probably just remove one more card. One less strike will make this deck just a little bit better. And I think that's all we need here. One less strike. 
Very happy with these two potions into the heart. Ancient potion to block the Vuln. Um, block potion just to get some block to double with the entrenches can be very strong. Not one less P-Strike. Eh, they're kind of the same. I'm not really playing either of them anyway. Show me Evolve Turn 1. It's not Evolve Turn 1. I think we want a pocket watch here. Currently, we're going to get put two... Um, two burns on top of the deck, followed by... My draw for the turn, and then we get attacked for a ton. So if we don't allow the pocket watch to draw extra cards, we could really, really run into some problems next turn. Um, even as it... Even as it is with the extra draw, this could go badly. Thankfully, we've got double Reaper offering here. That doesn't look too bad. Second wind is nice. Double Reaper won't do anything, actually. So we're just going to second wind our hand here. It's not the greatest turn, but we can still get all this health back. We just need to get set up. Um, it's next turn that I'm a bit worried about, though. Okay, we can play Arma, Evolve, Power Through, Defense Strike. We just play the whole hand. We'll block for 33. Ooh. We're barely holding on here. It's not good. All of the important powers are towards the bottom here. Do not believe that we're dead. At least we have block potion to make sure we're not dead. Let's double check here. So we take five plus nine by two. We're alive. We're alive. And we draw a lot next turn because we get burns on top. And now we have evolve in play. Here we go. Here we go. Could have just played the Entrench. Um, Dark Embrace lets me play another card. Or we could stop playing right now. No, we should at least Entrench. Hmm. I feel like I need to Dark Embrace. Or maybe Block Pot Entrench to be safe. Lock pot and trench. I'm a little afraid here. This would heal 44. We can do better though, right? Look, we can do better. Let's use the pocket watch, please. Need to draw my entrenches again. Here we go. Okay. Okay. I think we can recover from this position now. I can also kill one if that makes it easier. I think it does. Now we go back to full health, same as we did in the Awaken 1 fight with a double Reaper.
This has been a tough run, actually. Kind of uh, sketchy at times. Reaper is 30 twice. That's enough. We flower on one, I think, is probably the best number. We get the energy on turn two. Strength potion is a good drop. That means we get five more health off the Ornithopter. Forget about the damage it adds. It's just about the extra health here. I don't think I want a Brutality. We want to be safe once we get the double barricade up. I am feeling pretty good going into the final battle here. It'd be better if we had a block potion, but we do get turn one barricade, turn one disarm. That's lucky. We can go disarm, inflame, barricade, block the vulnerable, block the first multi hits. We guaranteed survive the first cycle just with this opening hand. That's a good start. Our adversary has goofed. And we draw eight cards next turn. Don't play the defend. I don't want to draw less cards. Just frail, no other debuffs. And we get multi-hit first, so we can start accumulating block. This is really good news. Hmm. I shouldn't need Reaper in this fight. Can double bash to have a weak next turn? I think I'd rather just have more cards. That's not great, but it's fine. I already got rid of Reaper. I did, so I don't need the spot weakness. We can go long in this fight. I don't have to worry about rushing damage at all here. Not even a little bit. Arma, power through, entrench, second wins. Might as well body slam, might as well. Good. The entrenching begin. Oh, perfect, okay. That's what you like to see. Boom. Boom. Get Entrench again next turn. Poor Heart has no chance now. Boom. 1,000 damage. We need more block. Bonk. If you just let this fight go on forever, what happens? Eventually, the heart actually increases its damage so much that 999 block will not keep you alive, and then the heart will win. So, best to win against that heart. GG, Mr. Heart. GG, that's number nine in a row with a slamming and jamming deck of cards. GG. GG, Twitch chat.
Not too shabby at all. It's nice to have a real streak on in a delightful way. The ultimate blocked artery. <laughs> That's great. That's right. Double perfected strike. Clearly carrying that uh, run to a win. We were able to use it in Act 1 to get through some early combats, and then it, it became pretty useless pretty quick. Even with Necronomicon, it was pretty bad. Yeah, what Twitch chat has it been done? The Spire sleepeth and... The Believers get a payout. Congratulations to the Believers there. Prospy Games using their payout to join the illustrious list of Channel Cuties. All hail Twitch chat, a new Channel Cutie. All hail. You're on the list, Prospy. Classic 3.6 million point payout to the believers there. Ridiculous. Yeah, really, it really demonstrates how pointless strikes are often. It's just so easy to do damage in other ways. And to think they were all mystified by that body slam when we picked it. I'm sure it made more sense by the end, huh? But I meant it what I said when I picked that body slam, which is that body slam and pocket watch work really well together because you can use the pocket watch to get your block set up and then the body slam does infinite damage. Pretty much. Just like a soldier in World War I, this ironclad was fighting in entrenches and managed to prevail after a long and grueling run. GG. Feels like Pocket Watch works well with almost everything. On Clad, for sure. Clad is definitely a, a Pocket Watch friendly character. Number 10 today or tomorrow. Unfortunately, Buzz Bloom, the answer is neither. Um, we are going to switch games here for today. to play a little bit of Monster Train, but that's going to come after the break. And then tomorrow, I'm actually not going to be here. So there won't be a live stream tomorrow. And then... Actually, I've got even worse news. Friday, we're going to be playing our community-voted game of Wildermyth, as well as checking out um, Patrick's Parabox. So we actually won't see number 10 until uh, Tuesday, which is almost a week away, sadly. But there's a lot going on. So, we'll return for Ironclad run number 10 on Tuesday. But for now, it's going to be Monster Train time. And before that happens, I'm going to take a quick break, refill the link, stretch the water Twitch chat. So, back in a few minutes. When I return, we're going to go to heck. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back, and the wait is over. It is time for a journey into heck. So we are playing some monster train to a shot. Somewhere here. There it is. Hell. Heck. Oh. Our what now? Or nothing. Heck our deck. It's time to go to heck. I haven't done a whole lot yet of uh, Monster Train this year. Still would call this my second favorite deck building roguelite. Some mechanical similarities with Spire, but also a ton of differences. You can sort of think of this game as uh, one part deck builder, one part tower defense. Uh, along with a whole lot of complexity here. Our random starting allotment here is we are playing as Umbra. Umbra clan is our primary. Umbra clan are all about empowering other units by feeding your morsel minions to them. And that's uh, that's kind of epitomized by our champion here, Primordium, who is able to be devoured multiple times. That's the buffet keyword. And adds their stats to the unit that eats them. So we'll want to get one big unit to feed Primordium to multiple times. Snack-based. That's right, the snack-based clan. And we're paired with the spell-based clan, Stygian, who are all about dealing damage directly to enemies with spells and having some kind of utility effects going on. I like the two random Crypt Builders, deal 60 to the front enemy, paired with the Forgone Powers. These Crypt Builders have the Offering keyword, meaning they're played for free if discarded, and the Forgone Powers can discard them. So that's kind of cool. We also choose an Artifact and an Upgrade line for the Champion to start. Three magic power is kind of cool on the uh, the magic power clan. It actually makes the plinks pretty strong. You know what? Let's take three magic power. All magical effects improve their number by three, basically, um, for damage and healing values. And anything with the attune keyword multiplies that by five. So it's actually plus 15 on the attune spells. As for an upgrade line, we either choose Aggressive Edible, which has a high base damage value, or Superfood, which passes status effects to the Eater. Currently, we don't have any status effects, but this one can be very strong and very breakable. So let's try Superfood. I like breaking the game with Superfood. Also gonna grab an early hundred gold from the divine boons here. Can we handle spikes? I think so. We can kill a lot of enemies just with the plinks, actually. The plinks will do very good damage on this first fight. So I'm pretty sure we can take the additional gold for the challenge here. Our big weakness is the mini boss that arrives at the end here. He's got over 100 health, and we don't have an easy way to kill him. Unless. Actually, I should have put the Morsel Miner down first. Whoops. That's fine. Totally fine. So, Primordium will pass their status effects to the frontmost unit on their floor. That's this train steward here. I have to enable the monster train thing. Um, actually, I should be able to do that right now. 
One sec. Okay, let's see if that works. Why are we on a train? Why wouldn't we be? If only I could be on a train. There we go. Sweet. Specifically a quadruple decker train, that's correct. Wow, what a big steward. Good work, sir. Oops. Alright, our boss has 150 hit points. That's definitely a lot to chunk through here. But our champion train steward will do their best. The double trip builders actually take care of the boss, no problem. That big ol' 75. Good work. We score lots of money, meaning we're pretty rich now. And here is a status effect that we can pass with Primordium. Prismal Dust applies 1x damage shield and consumes. This is certainly the start of something breakable. I would love to have more powerful spells. Titan's Gratitude seems pretty dang good. 40 damage for one energy. We could take a third Crypt Builder. I tried Inkbound uh, very briefly, Brig Gold. Definitely a very different game. Didn't find that I clicked with it much, but I'm willing to look at it again in the future. Let's go Merchant of Steel first. Um, here we can grab and upgrade a unit from the Stygian banner. We see that we're being offered large stone, improving the base stats of the unit substantially. That could be a, a good pairing for Primordium, especially if we get something with Sweep. Now it's Titan Sentry or Guard of the Unnamed, huh? Neither of these are a very good uh, base unit for combat. We could maybe go Titan Sentry. Big Shark. Actually, Big Shark is just good in general, so let's take Titan Sentry here. Each time the unit is damaged, it will apply negative statuses to enemies on its floor, and being big means it has huge health, which is quite good. Lots of damage it can take. Let's just give it a uh, large stone and 10 more health here. 2085 is pretty good base stats. And this will become sort of the core of our strategy for a while. 
We are currently guaranteed to draw this unit on turn one because of a mechanic in Monster Train that we call Priority Draw. Basically, you're going to get a minimum of one banner unit per turn. Unit that came from a unit banner or banner reward. Until you have uh, drawn all of your units at least one time. So we have two ways to make morsels here. Or just a little bit more frostbite. I don't think that's much of a deal. Do I want automatic morsel generation? Maybe. Maybe. I guess I'll take the one per turn. Seems okay. And I'm probably going a horde Stygian banner next turn. Interesting. Let's remove one steward then. And let's grab a unit draft, too. I'm looking for a good unit to fuse with our current one. At Divine Temples, we can sort of fuse two units together to make one superpower unit. I guess we'll feed you. That is well. I have not played Tiny Rogues, but I've heard a little bit about it. No way to kill this collector, huh? No, I have not played Tiny Rogues. Two for one? Yeah. Having more fun with Tiny Rogues than with Elden Ring? Isn't that just the way of cute roguelites? They do it so well. Too well. Titan Sentry easily beats this mini-boss here. GG. More space, more morsel generation. Let's grab more space here. We're automatically making morsels each turn. If we don't have extra floor capacity, it's pretty hard to feed those morsels to our units. So a space prism is a nice way to do that. Ballisk Mage is one of my favorites. Plus 10 magic power on this floor makes cards like Crypt Builder hit a lot harder. Yeah. Love abusing the Mollusk Mage. We could double down on Titan Sentry. Six Frostbite per damage taken is actually pretty strong. And then we could have the Mollusk Mage as a backup unit. Hmm. Let's do that. 
How's it going, Acappy? I, ha I had a lot of interest from viewers in seeing more Monster Train, so I ultimately decided to come back and uh, do some more content with it. Drop Cage is so hard to get to use. Man Ock, thanks for the four-man raid. Welcome, welcome. Everybody. Welcome, welcome. All right, I'm going to make this Titan's Gratitude piercing. Anything I want to make spell chain? Not really. How's it going? It goes well. Currently having a very good time with uh, a monster train, just getting started in a run here. We had some very good Slay the Spire earlier. How's it going, Temadox? Life is good. Life is very good. I'm supposed to look at this first. It's fine. Maybe take Siren of the Sea to combine with the Mollusk Mage. I, I could do that. Yeah, I think Mollusk Mage will work uh, pretty well here. Which of the train's pyre shards do we relight? Add 25 health to one unit. Get blood for blood, restoring pyre health when our pyre kills something. Or give 10 health to all units and get heartless, meaning they cannot be healed. Uh, I think that's really good on Primordium, right? Primordium adds their status effects, uh, adds their stats to the frontmost unit. And with Petrified Heart, that should be 10 more health added by Primordium each turn. This would prevent us from healing off of the Lifesteal status effect, but I think it might be worth it. Let's take it. The Pyre Shard flickers to life, the treasure within now revealed, as the Pyre removes its final defense. Manok has been doing some uh, monster train. That's awesome to hear. It's cool to see a little bit more monster train on Twitch. Still have three quarters of the crowns to go. Some of them are pretty tough. Last year, we filled out the complete logbook on stream, by the way. Here's the, the full shiny goodness for my monster train cred. Check that out. Delightful. Okay, so Titan Sentry will add lots of Frostbite to each unit. In fact, getting a lot of Frostbite stacked on Talos right away is not a bad idea here. Take this hit, please. I'm gonna hit everything. Is Monster Train as difficult as Slay the Spire? 
on the highest difficulty, I tend to think that um, Monster Train Covenant 25 feels around the same as uh, Ascension 15 in Slay the Spire. So it gets almost as hard as Spire, but not quite. Definitely still a challenging game, particularly on the highest difficulties. bit easier to get into as well. And I would say the, the basic difficulty, Covenant Zero, is easier than Slay the Spire's Covenant Zero. Yes, get more frost. Perfect. You can die. Hope you like that 50 frostbite per turn, Talos. GG. Furnace Tap is definitely tempting here. Furnace Tap is very breakable with Primordium. Superfood Primordium, specifically. As you can pass Multi-Strike, that is a status from turn to turn. Let's take that. We're also offered another unit here. I see Silophyte with Sweep could be an interesting recipient for Primordium's multi-striking and statuses overall. That said, I think Lee, I think simply infusing Mollusk Mage into Siren of the Sea is all we want to do here for the top floor. So I'm going to skip all of these. And then we get offered Energy, Draw, or Capacity. And you want to take whichever one kind of helps your deck work a bit better. I think this deck wants Card Draw as most of ours do, so that we can get uh, to our powerful cards more quickly, so that we can play more spells per turn for more encant, and a few other purposes. We're going to want to pair that with removing cards and going to Merchants of Magic to get energy discounts onto our spells. what this is. More units I don't want. Oh, and we can get Stalwart Snack, the version of Superfood that lasts even longer. Which means we can apply that 20 health more times. And we can pass effects like Furnace Tap. <clears throat> Excuse me, more times. The Heartless uh, debuff means this unit cannot be healed. We have that from one of our uh, relics here. One of our artifacts.
We do get minus two cost. Good. I think we want to make this zero cost. Or maybe this minus two cost is another option, actually. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, we can pay full price for Furnace Tap. Get Raving says, uh, Quick Mass say a streak of 20 with 66% win rate, according to 2022 of my bot, would mean a very small chance of getting a 20 streak. Have I gotten that much better? Do I meme less? Or could I share why I think I can beat the odds? Yeah, uh, the short answer here is that my the win rate of 66% is factoring all of the days where I'm I'm memeing or I'm tired or I'm not playing all that well. Um, so when I do pull myself together and perform consistently, uh, I can beat my own statistics like that. Yeah, Aspire Run is not quite like flipping a coin, as Perma Pensive says. Gonna add piercing onto a crypt builder here too. I don't think it's good on planks, but I like it on crypt builder quite a bit. Oops, yeah, go here. Good reminder. Double stack. Okay. Yes. Twenty magic power and consume that can go on a plank. Should only be two costs. Yeah, this is going to be really, really silly. Just you wait. Enemies heal to full, huh? I could deal with that. For a random artifact. This is one of the tougher challenges. But only if you're afraid. Only if you are afraid. Titan Sentry can go on the bottom floor. They'll be able to kill backliners like the Quill Marksman. We're going to need to scale our damage up big time to heat these frontliners, as we can't just chip them down since they full heal each time they move up. Spooky. Very spooky. I didn't draw any of my answers, huh? Definitely spooky. It definitely, that is spooky. So this fellow will do a fair bit of damage to the Pyre, unfortunately. Even if I plink a bunch of times, I don't think we kill him. Concerning. Not good enough.
Okay, here's our uh, decent hand, though. Crypt Builder would kill you outright, which is good. But then there's this one. We really need to... Um, furnace tap so that we can get multi-striking going on. But that won't kill this guy this turn. And if he gets to the top, we're straight dead. So that is a slight problem. I guess we can YOLO the Forgone Power, and if it discards the Crypt Builder, then we can play Furnace Tap. Otherwise, it looks like we probably don't get to play Furnace Tap here. Unless we play it uh, directly onto Siren of the Sea, then we could get the damage immediately, and that would be good enough, I guess. But will that be good enough for next turn? I'm not sure. We get Ember Drain 8, so we can't play any more energy-costing spells after playing the Furnace Tap, which is definitely a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. Which is harder between Slay the Spire and Wild Frost? I found Spire to be a lot harder, personally. Let's see if we get it. No, okay. I guess we'll furnace tap directly then? Guess so. Oh, except you're not dead. <laughs> We're still five short. Okay, well that's um that's run over, unfortunately. Damn it. Classic Umbra run. What I shouldn't have done is take the uh, Heaven Seal challenge. I knew better personally, but I got greedy. But yeah, that's that's super just a death to Heaven Seal when taken inappropriately. I talk about how that can kill you uh, sometimes, but I don't often show it. Here's a demonstration for you. Let's try that again. Honestly, though, I really don't enjoy Umber Runs, so whatever. I, I have to say, I, I enjoy all the characters of Slay the Spire equally, and I love them quite a lot. That is not the case for this game. Definitely not the case for this game. Ooh, hello. A double targeted reform, Little Icarus. Let's do it. Love Little Icarus runs. More like Dumbra. <laughs> hmm. Mm, sure. So, Little Fade will permanently scale her stats upon getting a kill, although that could be pretty difficult, actually. Ooh, and this fellow will give us money for getting a kill. I like it. I like it a lot. The goal is to feed as many kills to Little Fade as possible here. So that Little Fade gets the most bonus stats. We can reform Little Fade over and over again. Each time we reform her, she has better stats and a longer burnout timer.
And with each kill she scores, her spikes stat increases, as well as her attack stat. You're actually only five away from dying. Main Steward would get a kill on the Forged Disciple here. Hmm. Good enough, I guess. Small ouchie. That's not little fade. Fade does not get that kill, but we get started, and that's important. We also don't take too uh, too much pyre health damage here. So the goal is primarily just feed fills to kills to little fade here. That can be rather difficult at the beginning, actually. We'll figure something out, I'm sure. Probably. with me, Shadow Siege. He big. Ooh, cheaper merchants or draw 10 on turn 1. Although draw 10 on turn 1 is not that helpful with little fate, actually. So let's take the cheaper merchants here. Bigger. I'm probably not going to use that uh, base unit. So no upgrades here then. Appreciate Shadow Siege for existing, but you're not courageous enough to pick it. A very reasonable choice. Very reasonable choice. Yeah, we're going to need Sketches of Salvation to use it properly. Or we can fuse it with another unit, which is probably the better approach here. Let's see how Little Fade does. Probably poorly here. Got more tough units. Hmm. Concerning. Very concerning. Kill the Collector, I guess. Mm -mm. I'd rather kill this guy. Collector's already dying.
It's fine. front, you go behind, and they both die, you go in front, Little Fate will kill this too, this looks questionable. Do more damage to that boss. And plink it too. Worth it. Cool. Not the strongest little fade start, but we don't need the huge start to get a, a, an endgame little fade that's very powerful. One o five. Here we go. Get spiked. Another reform of our choosing. What about an entombed explosive, though? Would be nice to have a way to deal damage to enemies beyond just little fade. Shadow siege continues to be hilarious here. Kind of dig Ember Cash. We can spam spells with it, but it's backloaded energy, which is the opposite of what we want. Let's not take it. Hmm. Could take any of these as a base unit to infuse a Shadow Siege into. None of them feel that strong, but uh, we could do one of them. Got O Kevin. Very powerful stat line if we were to fuse them, but still needs fuel, which is a bit of an issue. Fuel I don't have. I'm going to skip these three. I believe in this Umbra banner. Surely, surely it'll be good. <laughs> so it's either Morsel Maker or the Alloyed Construct. Or we just try to play with only Little Fade, which I don't imagine will work for very long. I guess it has to be Morsel Maker. Giant Maker. Wait a minute. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. It'll cost six, though, is the problem. So it's not actually very good. Cute, though.
Yeah, imagine finding this after infusing. If only we'd done that, but we did it before, which is kind of a huge bummer here. Tiny big man. Tiny, tiny big man. Or we could have a very big morsel maker. Maybe that's what we do. We make a five capacity morsel maker with 100 to 100. Let's do that. Because this unit we can actually play, this one. We have a 95 95, five capacity, automatically makes morsels for itself. The biggest morsel maker I've ever seen. Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Full stack. That's also pretty okay. See if we can still win. Call me Bui. Thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Koozie Sub Club. Get in there, little Fade. There's so many of them, you can kill them, surely. Don't trust the sweeper to do it. He's so big. Why he's so big, though? Why indeed he's so big? Can perish. I could plink some more units, but again, we're trying to feed the kills to Little Fade specifically here. Stealth and then put little fade? Probably. Oh well. Little Fade, no! Yeah, we'll get Little Fade back next turn, maybe? Hmm. Maybe. That's fine, actually. Okay, Little Fade, sh oh no, but we won't be able to play Little Fade up top. Ah, oh, shoot. Garbage. Oh, that's really bad. You're too big. That's a big bummer. Yeah, maybe the big morsel maker is better somewhere else. Certainly a possibility. Fortunately, it looks like we take a bunch of damage here. Not much I can do about that. Uh, Plink can help, actually, but it didn't. Good talk. Good talk. Just 
Sweep, multi-strike, trample, and quick. With two on a unit, what's the strongest combination? I think quick and sweep usually is. Quick sweep is ridiculous. Hmm, again, we can't redeploy Little Fade up top here. Although we don't need Little Fade to kill the boss, I guess. Queep. That's right, Queep. Queep is the best. Alright, and the top floor easily beats the boss, at least. Feel darkness. To your face. Ooh, another spell that attacks units. I like blazing bolts here. I think it's better than forever consumed, usually. Usually. These I'm going to skip. And I think we're taking card draw. Yeah, card draw means we're more likely to draw reform. More likely to get perils of production. Yeah. Kindle would have been an enabler for the... The other guy. That's true. That is true. Am I ever going to a Merchant of Steel again? Eh, eventually. Don't need to worry about one for now, though. We're here to remove cards, is what we're here to do. Space does solve the problem where we couldn't fit Fade where we wanted to on the top. Uh, it doesn't actually, because this stupid thing keeps creating morsels every turn that make it impossible, even with seven capacity, to play anything else on their floor. No, no. Could make Little Flayed Endless. Little Flayed? Little Fade Endless. Which can be very nice. They also get Quick, which means they strike before enemies attack, which is very helpful. Reduces the scaling they get per dead enemy, but I think in this case really helps. Although that also means I have absolutely nothing to reform, which is uh, questionable. But having quick is really important here. It, it definitely lets Little Fade get kills a lot more easily. So let's cross path Eternal Flame here. And uh, see where that leads us. I think it's going to lead us to a very small deck of cards. We're actually getting less health than reforming, aren't we? Hmm. I'm not convinced that was correct, actually. fit in the middle. So I guess you're going on the bottom. Or you'll kill one thing per turn, probably. Team is fine. Yeah, it's only one health per turn? Hmm. I wonder if we miss... Misjudge this. Certainly looks like we have... Hmm. Oh well. Most of our cards are now useless. Yeah, this is not quite working out the way we want it to. the worst, though. We can feed basic morsels to Little Fade. That can help. I can Tumbra Morsels.
we're doing better now. This thing might beat the boss, which could be a slight issue. I guess it's not really an issue to win, huh? Oh, I did map that wrong, too. Hmm. Oot. Yeah, I did map that wrong. Uh, bummer. Thought you'd be at full health for some reason. Although if you win, they don't get to the top, so it doesn't matter. You do win, yes. Not quite. The draw. I'll take it. I will take it. Stormgate's not on my radar, Cyphus. Cave in can be nice. Take a cave in here. Okay, primitive molds can be removed now. So can plinks, actually. Plinks are even worse, for the most part. We'll do them in equal measure, I guess. Permafrost, we can slap on the molded. That way we always have that when we need it, which is basically never. Want to bother with magic power? Not really. I guess we can upgrade this plank three times. There's Holdover. Holdover engulfed in smoke. Holdover cave-in could be a thing. Holdover cave-in seems interesting. I have some ideas here. Spell chain. Could spell chain the molded, but we're not reviving enough things for that to matter. Purging a card's worth a uh, ten shards, though. Multi strike seems fine. We're fighting the stealth boss. How do I get rid of the stealth on the stealth boss? Morsel Maker can do it, I guess. You're going to go on top, then. You'll go in the middle. Interesting. Uh, so I put Little Fade here, we get the collector kill. Is that correct? Yes, we do. We kill them all, in fact. Little Fade gets the, both Silent Marksmen, the Husk Hermit gets the collector. Let's just cave in down here then. Of course that happens. That's fine, though. Now we can little fade cave in again. There we are. We're going to go here.
Okay, three of them get wiped out. I like that. Reform gets the Hermit back. Let that burn out. For the Masters! Stealthy boss. Cave in here. We'll fade here. Let's plink. Should absorb a hit from the crystal cloak. You attack here for 146. That doesn't actually die. <laughs> Amazing. That should cause, yeah, you die instead. It's fine. There's a couple stacks of stealth there. Little Fade will kill the overcharged tank now. Um, and let's reform some stuff that might survive for a minute. That should burn off enough stealth from the boss that the top floor can kill. Pretty good spikes on Little Fade now. And yes, we win, although it's pretty close, actually. A little spooky. GG. All that for an advanced prototype, making our steward units better, except I removed all the stewards, so I'll just take money instead. Phase three can help. Odaberry having endless draw one is kind of interesting, too. I can just skip these, though. Kill a friendly unit to play this card. But it makes morsels. Don't want morsels. Damage shield, though. Damage shield is a big deal. Damage shield can buy turn, uh, can buy time for little fade, as the spikes still activate even if they're immune. So let's take that. Damage shield is the way to go. And our champion gains even more attack power is insane with this version of Little Fade. We could also double stack the Void Binding to make it damage shield 4. Now we're talking. And let's also make it free so I can play it even with maximum Ember Drain. This is right. This is what we want. Um, we can do holdover perils of production to go with that too. Let's freaking go. Actually, I don't even need holdover perils. I've got so many base perils. Heck it. Uh, I could add consume to another card. This blink can consume as well. That's worth it. Oh, we can purge another card. Excellent. Purge this. No more cards for me, please. This deck is weird, ain't it? It's gonna work, too. It's the cool thing. This deck is gonna crush everything.
dazed. Uh, so let's go a little fade here and cave in, I guess. Yeah. I'm not going to play you yet. Jerk. Let the nonsense begin. Give me the money. Beautiful. Just uh, deploy. Perfect. Who said Little Fade needs health, right? Not me. X. Lane by the little fay. GG. That dude got destroyed. I think fewer cards is better. We're really just relying on little fay to do all the work now. Give me more card draw. The more card draw we have, the faster we draw to void binding, the more frequently we can play it. Choose a divine artifact. Get a bonus for one fight. Or take 25 bucks, because you really don't need the bonus. Easy. Easy peasy. Trinket merchant along with remove two? Let's do it. We can afford one trinket from the trinket merchant. Or I could do this merchant of steel, I guess. Who needs a merchant of steel? Not me. Forge activates twice. Why would you ever skip there, even if you don't need the buffs? Oh yeah, you, you can... Skipping is what gives you the 25 gold, though. Skip equals 25 gold. Improve our scaling. For kill. Oh yeah, because you can skip before you get the option for 25 gold. You're right. Yes, that, that skip button is weird. I don't know why it's allowed. I think we remove Morsel Maker. <laughs> Genuinely? Um, we could maybe go for a reroll. Yeah, we could just barely afford what's left after a reroll. Sure. Garbage. Let's 
Let's lose the Entombed Explosive next. We still have to get... Uh, wait, did I mess up here? Oh, no, good. Okay. I was going to say, we still have to get 25 more pack shards. In the final thing. True essence of card games is to remove all your cards. Dang right. Oh, they've got spikes? That's actually really bad. I gave them spikes? That was a bad idea. Now, why did I go ahead and do that? <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. Thin the numbers here a little bit. That's too many enemies. Too many, I say. Oh yeah, this doesn't consume sometimes, that's right. Tragic. Oh, you can't even move, huh? Hmm. That's all right. You'll get killed. Fine then. A brief respite. We draw basically all the same cards again, which is really nice. And just like that, everybody's dead. GG. Little Fade takes the cake despite the spikes. 
Ooh, Crushing Demise could be quite good. Kill a random non-boss enemy unit, kill a random friendly unit. We can use that to deal with particularly problematic enemies. Let's grab that during the Divinity fight. Because I do plan on removing our final uh, unit here, the Morsel Maker. Yeah, and exactly, accidentally killing our own units is a total non-issue. Totally not an issue. Plus five health on uh, Little Fade? I mean, I guess. Don't need Mind Jacks or Infuse Mallets. Grant more stacks of Burnout doesn't matter because Little Fade is endless. Extra upgrade on slot on units does not matter because Little Fade is endless. We can just remove more units. Oh yeah, we need to be able to get to 100 shards, which means we need to buy both of these upgrades. Almost forgot about that. Good reminder. But yes, thankfully we can. Bell Chain, Crushing Demise, and purge this stupid plank. And purge... You? You? Hold, it doesn't do anything anymore either. Purge... You? Blazing Bolts can go, too, actually. No, this plink can go. Okay, the perfect deck. There's only 11 cards left. This is all we need, apparently. It's Cleanse Seraph? Whatever, I'm endless. It's fine. My spikes? Cleanse all units of effects that don't benefit Seraph. What do the shards do? Shards make enemies more powerful, and we also need a hundred of them to enter the final battle against the last divinity. Hmm, but I don't have a draw one effect. Be able to replay Little Fade. That's a little concerning. Oh well. Sure, it's fine. We lose half of our spikes in this moment, which is still okay. Could reapply Void Binding, but I want to—I want Little Fade to die so we can reset our spikes. Let me just be here. Seraph doesn't really know what to do now. Perfect. Simply perfect. Good. Okay, once again, we'll let Little Fade perish to reset. This is working quite well so far, though. But yeah, this is Cleanse Seraph. He's having a hard time.
even needed crushing demise here. Alright, but now for the final wave. How does Little Fade deal with this? Pretty well, turns out. Well, GG. Here it falls just like that. Love me a good little fade run. Really do. Last Divinity has different status effects on each floor and gains seven attack power upon gaining Relentless. Thing is on all three floors simultaneously, which normally would make it a bit of a challenge here. Little Fade says, no prob. I got this. Uh, we don't need to focus on stacking spikes as much here, so I'm going to do more aggressive Crushing Demise stuff and Blazing Bolts stuff. So that we can kill everything. This tycoon, I just want you to die. Dying is good. Perfection. Well, sort of. Huge Spikes is able to kill just about anything. Especially when we combine it with the damage shield from the Void Binding constantly. Have some bolts. Perfect. Mini boss has over 600 health. Little Fade says no problem. Actually, Crushing Demise says no problem. In fact, let's just do this. And we're back. Just crushing everything. Wait, you're still alive. How dare you? How dare you? All of them die to Little Fade. Two hundred and ninety-three spikes now. This thing also dies. Didn't draw my void binding, that's fine. Although we gotta be careful we're actually dealing enough damage to last divinity to win the relentless phase. Otherwise we could run into a slight issue. I think that means we need to start stealthing Little Fade. Probably now, actually. This wave won't reach the top if Little Fade wins Relentless on the bottom. We're going to put Little Fade on the bottom here and start stealthing.
get a couple of curses. And then this is not the end. X means Little Fade wins the one-on-one -on -one against the last divinity here. It's exactly what we want. GG. This is, in fact, the end. Get spiked, sir. GG. Just like that, we get a clean divinity kill with just Little Fade doing what she does best. Spike and stuff. Ridiculous. You'll love to see it. Being able to purge so many cards from the deck was also pretty important. We did skip a lot of cards. Wow, we actually got a new personal record. Deck size on victory, 10, with a previous best of 12. Cool. Very cool. GG. GG, Twitch chat. Am I happy I went cross path? Oh yeah, uh, I'm really happy we went endless there. I think that worked out quite well. Although we might have been able to do hot shenanigans with Crushing Demise. Getting the, the damage shield online really helped. Is it possible to not get a record? I think it is. I think it is possible. Well, I'm not ready to quit yet. Let's do one more run of Monster Train. Uh, for this run actually gets started here. I am going to take a quick break though. Our last break of the day. Going to refill my legs, stretch my water. I'll leave you on this screen, our starting deck. We're Stygian slash Umbra here. And maybe this goes well? We'll see. Back in just a couple minutes, Twitch chat. When I return, another monster train run begins. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Thank you for hanging out as I got myself some tea. So we get to retry the Stygian slash Umbra run, except this time Stygian is the primary. I think it'll go a little bit better. We've got Solgar, the martyr, who's all about having spells played on their floor. Let's see which variants we get. Cold Channel. I don't ever take Dire Channel. Uh, Cold Channel stacks Revenge Frostbite, which can get very silly very quick. Unfortunately, that doesn't combo with Prismal Dust very well, but uh, whatever. Got some peppermint tea with honey today. One of my go-to favorites. Ooh, Volatile Gauge. When you draw any non-champ card, its cost is randomized between 1 and 3. Makes the Crypt Builders pretty strong. Makes the Prismal Dusts pretty good. Let's do it. Let's do a Volatile Gauge run. You get 3 more card draw per turn, which is very strong. This is fine. A little bit of pyre damage isn't too bad a thing in the first couple fights. Let's go and ghosts are cool. The streak lives at nine for the ironclad, which is truly ridiculous. my esteemed opinion. to really harm these units. That's kind of sad. did use the Crypt Builders to kill the boss. Bonk. Perfect. GG. Not a bad first fight. We can get a third Crypt Builder. They're amazing with the Volatile Gauge. Titan's Tooth, also not bad. Five damage to all enemy units and apply Frostbite 10 to each of them. Let's get that AoE option. Take the big expensive cards. This is another big expensive card. X cost. Take it. Just take it. And yeah, we go early Merchant of Steel here, for sure. We are offered Endless. We are offered a Sweeper or another Encanter. Encant stacking with Soulguard is quite good. I don't need more Sweep. 
Let's take Siren of the Sea. And I think I'm going to reroll. I don't want any of these upgrades. Quick is okay. Damage shield is pretty good also. Quick means they'll attack before the enemies do. That can be bad with Soul Guard, but whatever. What's the Cuddle Hex's infusion? Okay, does the full thing. It's kind of cool. Quick would have been better with the Sweeper, that is true. Not too worried either way. We're going to have a really good Merchant of Magic, that's for sure. floor with these two? I don't love it, though. Maybe top floor was better. Tier 1 Soul Guard has so little health. Really hard to use this Frostbite, unfortunately. Well, Crypt Builder goes a long way, though. Goes a very long way. That's a good amount of Frostbite, at least. Did not get Crypt Builder back, though. Hmm. Uh-oh. We need to play the Train Steward. That'll proc the Frostbite one more time. Morsel won't do anything, though. Maybe it's just play Titan's Tooth. Another 10 Frostbite, so it takes 25 damage per combat round with the Pyre. Probably we should do that. Yeah. Should be two hits on the pyre? Yeah, just two. Hey there, little by little. The logbook is complete, so we're now just kind of playing for funsies here. And a lot of fun it is, too. Wouldn't the morsel proc the frost? Uh, not m not m more times than it already would. Right? I don't think so. Don't really want to hold over anything here. So, let's add more magic power to this. Let's make you cheaper. Good roll. Magic power here. Wait, what? Oh, I made the one wrong one cheaper. Whoops, make this one cheaper too. Seems good. With volatile gauge, you randomly roll the cost and then you apply cost modifiers. Hmm, morsel made. Automatically. Eat units that have the eaten keyword. Hmm. 
Kind of an interesting fusion. Takes a while to fuse, though. I'm going to say no. I'm going to skip these. Uh, and we're going to copy a card five freaking times because we have a cheapened spell chain crypt builder, and that is dumb. Oh my. Big hammer times five. Let's go. Now our deck, very strong. And each of these is going to activate um, Encant a couple of times as well. It's truly ridiculous. Way to do this. Interesting. Mm. There's no real way to get uh, more armor to Soul Guard, huh? Really. Guess we just use the Crypt Builders to win then. Seems fine. Stop dropping bombs on your floor, though, sir. Is there a particular combination that's especially difficult to win with? I personally struggled a lot with uh, Umbra slash Awoken. Because neither clan has really good scaling on their own, and their combination kind of interferes with itself. So I'd say that's one of the hardest. All rolled two cost, huh? Rude. Okay, just the boss, then. Here we go. There they are. Zero cost. Zero cost. One cost. One cost. Perfect. It's hammer time. GG, sir. That's right, it's the Sands of Time run all over again. What a good run it was. Get blasted, sir. Discard your hand, draw five new cards? That's kind of interesting. Let's try that. Why would you reduce a card cost with Volatile Gauge? Because it works in this game. This actually works, is the reason. I want anything for the Siren at the Sea here. Nope. I think having a little bit more energy per turn is a good idea, though. We are definitely struggling to play everything. Time for more removals. Big stone. Could fuse Siren into Siren, but I think we're just killing stuff with spells. It's the real truth here. There we go. 50 hell. 
one revenge per shard. Frostbite, very good. Remove two train stewards. And remove more cards, more train stewards. But just one here. I want to be able to buy more upgrades at the next Merchant of Magic. Oh no, we're going to go Concealed Caverns, Unstable Vortex, Hellvent. So let's remove one more. The last steward. Stewards, get out. Let the hammering begin. This is fine. Ah. Well, that's right, this does damage too. Upon consuming, good. Very good. We do one, one, two. Time to get hammered. So normally, again, this thing rolls between one and three cost. So one, two, or three. But with a minus one cost, we sometimes see them be zero cost because they're actually zero, one, or two. Frostbite per damage instance. Not bad. GG. That Frostbite adds up really fast with this version of uh, Soulguard. One more Titan's Tooth sounds good. Oh, it didn't even occur to me, by the way, but if we deep offering, all of the Crypt Builders in our hand get played for free. Which is pretty sweet. Chain copies get plus one cost. That's right. When you spell chain a card, uh, you create a new copy that's one higher cost than the original. These foregone powers are terrible. Minus two cost. Put that on offering or on Titan's Tooth? Put that on deep offering. I don't want to make that intrinsic, though, do I? I don't think so. Should be able to get lots more upgrades. Well, maybe not, actually. Only three more floors. I'll figure it out. We're duping cards, too. A dog made of bones. It's by Hell Portal. You can get the Bone Dog's Favor, which heals us five upon being retained and looks super adorable. Or purge a card. I think we're purging here. Lose another foregone power. Crypt Builders only, please.
And I almost want to dupe the deep offering, considering all these crypt builders. It seems just really, really good, actually. Let's do that and see what happens. How's it going, Schloss Ali? Any other really good deck building roguelites? I would give a shout out to Griftlands by Clay Games. Uh, I also really liked Rogue Book by the Feria Devs, and more recently, Cobalt Core. It's a nice little space combat deck building roguelite. Strongly recommend all of those. Super great uh, deck builders. Okay, so we have the deep offering. It means we can do the silly nonsense. Let's do it this way. So when, we, when we play the deep offering, we discard our hand and draw five. Cards that are discarded with the offering keyword are played for free. So both of these Crypt Builders get played. And because one of them was Spell Chain, we make a copy, the Spell Chain copy, of the Spell Chain one. Pretty sweet. So likewise here, if I play this deep offering, these Crypt Builders get played for free. Which absolutely destroys them. And then my entire hand is Crypt Builders. Because of course it is. GG. Vault of the Void. That's not a bad one. Haven't done a lot of Vault of the Void on stream, but I've definitely heard some very good things about it. I've played a little bit. Definitely not a bad game. Discard Crypt Builder. Dang it. This is not the end, they say. Yes, it is. Hit it with a hammer. Again. 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 And it's going to get a lot of frostbite just from hitting uh, Skullguard there. 50 frostbite. So that'll cause it to die pretty quick. Especially if we keep hammering it. Bonk. Bonk. BG. Any upcoming roguelites anyone's interested in? I'm interested in Hades, Hades 2, which is coming up soonish. That should be very exciting. And multi-strike to the Siren of the Sea is kind of interesting. The Ember Drain's really bad, though. I want engine upgrade. Plus one energy per turn for the rest of battle. Actually sounds really helpful. This deck would use six or seven energy per turn. 
Give me a divine artifact for one battle. I'll just take money. Oh, that's true. Hades 2 is probably going to come into early access, huh? Let's slow it down a bit. As a game. Ooh, end of turn frozen cards are reduced to zero cost. We have Cuddle Hex. That's kind of cool, actually. These don't help much. I guess I will fuse uh, with the Siren then. How do we get 100 shards from here? Well, I'll have to lose 5 shards. That sounds hard. It's almost impossible to lose shards. Scourge fell. No. <laughs> Not the stinky curse lady. Yes, I'm uh, I'm gonna offering out of here. I'll play this though. It's a good one. Immense bonkification. Freaking got him. You're telling me this will get frozen and then made automatically zero cost? Oh my god. Badass. That's what you want to see. No shield for you. <laughs> the perfect hand doesn't ex Oh my good lord, and we have deep offerings, so I can just play them all for free. Oh my god, okay. Let's make the expensive versions. And then play all of them for free. Let's get rid of this first. That activates and can't for each card played as well. Absurd. Simply absurd. <laughs> she has some problems to deal with, huh? Killing enemies is hard. Those are both dead. Even more energy for next turn. Sounds good. Can't move, boss. There we go. I 
Okay, hitting Solgar this turn would not be a bad thing because it means lots of Frostbite on Fell. Be careful about how much we play, though. So I'll just do it this way. Wasn't great. Doc. More frostbite. Final way for Fell. Already Fell is losing. Let's make it more decisive with a whole bunch of Crypt Builders. Bonk. BG. BG. Another expensive card. Not that strong compared to some of the stuff we already have, though. I don't anticipate being able to use Shroud Spike very effectively. I do think we just want even more energy, though, to play these big expensive hammers with. Love it. We do be building crypts, though. Most certainly. I wonder if I got Remove Consume for my uh, Deep Offering. Be pretty cool. Holdover on the Cheap into Titan's Tooth is okay as well. I'm gonna keep my Titan's Tooths. Toothy. So just reroll. Airs remove consume. Okay, slap that on deep offering. So this is one cheaper than the random cost, and we get to keep it. Ridiculous. Simply ridiculous. Love it. What's here? We get. Oh, the Refraction Stones. Have a super big Siren of the Sea or a super tiny Siren of the Sea. I guess tiny is better because I can't use the big one very well. Mole. Wake of Insanity, thanks for three heckin' years of support with the Prime sub. Much love to you. And let's get the final cold channel upgrade. It goes up to 70 health and better yet, two frostbite per shard on revenge. Double frostbite output is really ridiculous. Maybe even too ridiculous. And now we can fit one more morsel. Hur hooray? Hooray, I think. Herzl never saved you. What do you think, kid? Seven spells on turn one. It's a good start.
Beware the sweeper. Peyton's Tooth gets played for free. Not much else, though. Hmm. Not bad. Frostbite for you. Yeah, it looks like that's the case, Manok, that the chained copies are retreated as base cost when randomized, so they can they can roll zero cost when we see them a second time. It's pretty cool. Oh my, this is a really good hand. Aya. Excellent. We do get Ember Drain, though. Doesn't matter, thankfully. Forty-nine shard means ninety-eight frostbite each time Soul Guard gets hit, which should be only one time, I guess. <laughs> Deep offering. Bonk. Okay, make that um, 124 Frostbite per time I take damage. The boss ends up with 250 Frostbite after two attacks. Ridiculous. Ooh, another offering keyword. This one gives Sap 2 to enemy units, making them deal less damage with attacks. I like it. Let's just take more three-cost cards. I mean... It's appropriate. What about the Ember Forge? Granting more Ember each turn? That's also perfect. And lastly, the Merchant of Magic, I think. Although we could go Hellvent and duplicate our Deep Offering, which is definitely tempting. Instead of remove two. We got some good removes still. Let's go to the Merchant of Magic. Maybe we can Eternal Stone the other deep offering. No? Bummer. Yeah, Stack Stone though. Ooh. That four Guardian's Amulet. That seems kind of cool, actually. Seems totally worth it. And those are all whatever. Apply spell weakness 2 to enemy units that reach the top floor. At end of turn, apply frozen to a random card, which becomes zero cost. Icicle fracture is very good. Totem fragment's pretty good. Let's take them both. 
Does Last Divinity clear sap? No, only Reap and Frostbite is cleared by the Last Divinity. We have 23 cards. Most of them are Crypt Builders. This seems like a very, very silly run that is about to happen. But Seraph is going to consume my spells. What do I do about that? Hmm. It's only the first spell we play each turn, I suppose. Pretty bad bottom floor, actually. Haha. Hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, so you can go here, go here. Seems good. I like building our own Sneko Pyramid, huh? Get 18 Frostbite on Seraph. That's pretty good. We would like to weaken Seraph in the early parts of this fight. When possible. Won't always be possible. Fine. Yeah, we can play copies of Crypt Builder to avoid the consume, but if we play the original Crypt Builder first, then we'll lose it. Good time to let Solgard take a bunch of damage. Uh, but I want to play as many spells on this floor as possible this turn, so probably that won't happen. I 
Let's mess up these guys now. Frostbite for you. You'll get what's coming to you. Glorious. The damage shield is going to matter much. If we're being honest. Do our best, though. Sap for Seraph. I hope so. Final wave. And yeah, Seraph just completely falls over to this. As you'd expect. I'm not gonna mess with this, cause uh frostbite stuff. And he goes to two by three, which adds four hundred frostbite to Seraph. Six hundred frostbite on Seraph. GG. That's a cool way to win. But we still have to beat the last divinity here. Who lives on every floor. Thankfully, our cards aren't consuming this time, so we can properly spam everything. We keep Emberforge alive. Do we keep Emberforge alive? I'm not sure we do. I could put Ember Forge, Siren of the Sea together. No Soul Guard? No, Soul Guard, Siren have to go together. On the bottom? Let's say on the bottom, yes. That is where things will happen. On the bottom. Ember Forge won't live long, though. But I can damage shield them. Okay. Top floor for you, then. Good. heck out of those fools, and give you a bunch of damage shields so you continue to produce plus two ember per turn for a while. Please and thank you. All of these become zero costs. Seems good. This floor is a bit tough. That's what deep offering is for.
dude down there. Buffering. Deep offering again. Might as well give you some damage shield, right? Seems wise. Okay, that looks pretty solid, as far as turns go. Our first mini-boss is here. How well can we handle such a thing? Looks like pretty well, is the answer here. Die. He can't even attack now. That's pretty good. Keep him coming. Okay, there's deep offering again. Looking pretty good. Discard. Play the whole hand, basically, by discarding everything. It's pretty insane. You stay alive longer. Oh, that guy still needs to die, right? He's got spell weakness now. We'll figure it out. Death. Keep offering. This is hilarious. Nobody attack me. Okay. Everyone form a line. Prepare to be hammered. Turn, good turn. Second mini boss is down, so all the mini bosses are gone.
And the champ, uh, the divinity has a lot of sap too, which further complicates matters for them. No damage for me. Sorry, 158 frostbite? <laughs> Hello? I guess that's fine. Nation. Two hundred frostbite per damage we take. This is not the end, it says, and yet, yes, it is. Yes, it freaking is. GG, divinity. It wrecks. Minus one. No attack because of the sap debuff. gets killed by the frostbite from that one damage it dealt. <laughs> GG. Twitch chat. GG. The hammer drops. For the W. A thoroughly silly run of Monster Train. Haven't had a run like that in quite a while. Haven't taken an early uh, volatile gauge in quite a while either. GG. Twitch chat. GG. Unfortunately, that does bring us to the close of today's show. Some very good Spire runs, some very good Monster Train runs. Tomorrow, there will not be a live stream. I've got some real life stuff to tackle tomorrow, so I won't be here. But we will be back on Friday playing Wildermyth, our community voted game for this month. And then there again won't be a stream on Saturday this week. So only one more show coming up this week, unfortunately. But I hope to make it a good one. Thank you so much for watching Throwing Tour, Fireworks, Beck Turtle. What's my favorite tribe in Monster Train currently? I like the um, Wormkin, the lizards that were added with the expansion. I think they're the most breakable and very fun. See you later. Azure Child, Samamir, Necrothal TV, Twitch Tarek, Aspidal, Do Not Put Me on Pizza, For Your Transformer, and everybody else, thank you so, so much for watching. Until next time, my friends, stay cozy and have a good one. Toodaloo.